we're live. Hey, everybody. It is Wednesday night. It is atop the fourth wall doing commentary on its own live uh, on its own storylines. Uh, tonight, we are going to cover what 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 became known as the other Insano arc and maybe Vice. We'll see. There's not uh, there's not too much to say about the Linksano arc. So We'll see how long it takes, so as we go through it and see if there's anything interesting to say or if we're, like, not going to be able to, like, you know, find anything of interest for people. Also, the, uh, uh, the, the YouTube stream thing says that there's no data coming through, so, huh. Anyway, joining me this evening, we've got Eliza. I'm always here. And we've got the game show reviewer. Howdy, y'all. Welcome to Self-Indulgent, the stream. <laughs> okay, now it says excellent condition. We'll see about that. And, uh, yeah, ga and as a reminder, the Game Show Reviewer is the one who put together these compilations that we're watching through. So, there so if there's any weird additions, it's me. all your fault. Yes, plenty of blame me abound. I am here to take the whipping. <laughs> what I the heck does that, that mean? I never get blamed for anything. <laughs> What the heck does that mean? You well, usually that means that like there's something wrong with the uh, with the stream. Like, like like it's not like you know getting through to you guys. But everyone seems to be actually reacting to what we're saying. So yay! As a reminder, a few things. Just like with last time, uh, try to keep your questions focused on storyline stuff. I'll, if you do at you know if you ask something else in the super chats like completely unrelated, like my reaction to something, I'm gonna try to be uh, just quick about it and then move on because. These streams are about talking about the storylines, and the uh, and also uh, these are going to feature people who are who we are not associated with, uh, you know, people who we had a relationship with, but but that uh, changed, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So we'll, we'll probably end up, you know, this is intended to be for fun. So we're not going to relitigate everything. We're not going to, you know, we'll say uh, we'll say our piece briefly and then move on to talking about in more interesting, you know, trivia and everything like that. I believe uh, an internet reviewer has actually one of the best lines about that kind of thing. Uh, I can't remember. I can't remember the guy's name, but it's something along the lines of, "They're a part of your past. You're not going to deny that they didn't happen. They're a part of you." I can't remember the guy who said that, though. I mean, what's that? Uh, Some um, idiot, I presume. Neebs. It was Neebs Gaming. That's it. It was That's Neebs it, Gaming. yeah. <sighs> All right. So let's get started here. Uh, I've adjusted the volume already and whatnot. Ah, right away. Right wild. This is tangentially related to the storyline because it relates to a storyline episode, but Delicious and Dungeon is getting adapted. So I've heard. Ooh, I love that. All right. We will begin with the Linksano arc. We already explained this. No need to pause there. <coughs> well, actually, there is a need to pause here because we are going to. Oh. So, so we're gonna because we're gonna walk into this right away with some background. Why, why Ling Sano at all? Uh, at this point, uh, I, I realized two things. One, we just had a heavy, you know, storyline based on uh, mystery. There was, you know, lots of action and intense fighting and, and this build-up and drama and stuff like that. And I decided, before we move on to the next big villain, we should have a breather arc. We should have uh, uh, something where we don't, where, where it's just comedic, it's just meant to be funny. And thus, Link Sano. Uh, it was, uh, you know, because at, at the, the continuing problem I have is other people. It's not, it's not to disparage other people, but when you're relying on other people for stuff, other people have their own priorities, their own things going on in their lives, and sometimes, especially if you're trying to get stuff out on a deadline, and it's vital that you have it, uh, sometimes you don't. it's, it's hard to, to, to worry about that constantly. So I was like, okay... The Warrior Review already established, you know, alternate universe versions of Dr. Insano. Why don't I officially canonize one of them and make it Dr. Link Sano? So, so now that we're done with Mechakara, we're going to have Dr. Link Sano show up. And he's going to be a goofy villain where he might have aspirations to take over the world. But instead, we're just going to keep slapsticking slapstick hitting him, preventing him from, from his accomplishing his goals, because he's not really supposed to be a serious threat. Makes sense. 
you this might been... be a this might be a bad time to point out uh, that the first time you needed a quote breather arc, you got a science officer. The next time you needed a breather arc, we're still there. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> So let us begin. The other Insano, originally just the original, and, and bear in mind, fans separated out the Linksano stuff from Vice, but originally this was all supposed to be Vice arc. It was supposed to be like, you know, set up Linksano as this villain for a bit and then get rid of him and clear the deck for, for Vice. Uh,. Uh, Messi or Mies Katet, sorry if I about pronunciation. Here's Linkara, a more reliable source of new content than most MMOs. Aw, oh, shucks. Yeah! Alright, let's properly begin this. Uh, Lego Maniac 91, yes, Contest of Champions was supposed to be a breather arc. Yup! And also, yes, everyone, happy Pride Month starting, uh, like in just a few hours. Indeed, happy Pride Month! I thought that was May. Nope, Pride, nope. Month, Pride, Pride Month, Month is, is June. Uh, June. Oh, okay. Is it the second version of the theme song, I want to say? It, it, it's a storyline that would not die. I knew eventually I'd replace a lot of these visuals with, like, widescreen ones. It's just, it was new enough that I only had, like, full screen stuff. What the hell? This is immediately after the Mechakara arc, so so yeah, I, I'm like, okay, what if he demorphed, but all his injuries were back? Okay, so that just leads to a beautiful moment of demorphing, relieved by a ah! collapse. <laughs> yeah, uh, that I, I'm wearing a hoodie right there that I'm basically using as a sling. <laughs> and, well, I'm not sure, and I'm not sure what that book, uh, where, where, that, that book, like, I, that, that, that's just something that was in my parents' library that, like, like okay, I thought that'd be kind of a funny, you know, roundabout way of, of talking about Mechakara. Oh, yeah, and, and the bandages on my head are all toilet paper. Yeah, okay, there yeah. you go. Because I, because I didn't realize you could just buy those kind of bandages at the time. I, that would probably look a lot better for this effect. I wait. There are people who didn't. Okay, maybe this might just be an effect I constantly get injured by. I, I always had a butt ton of those lying around. Yeah, no, I didn't know that wrap around bandages. I was like twenty one at the time, and I never had to buy anything besides band aids. I wish I could have said that, but uh, about when I was 12, my leg fell on a bike chain while going downhill. Yeesh. Who helped you with the toilet paper on my head? No one did. I think I just wrapped it around myself, which is why it kind of is sticking out the side there. <laughs> I went I went to medical school, and I'm weeping at this. Mike VLTG3, there's something funny about seeing the pile of bad comics start so small and then grow immensely over the years. Yeah, I think I've, yeah. I think I've kind of made it like an unofficial reference, like especially when we get to the 400th episode, that the pile is basically me throwing down comics. Yep. They're just growing over the years and I never clean them up. Alright, let's resume. Oh, uh, hey folks, welcome to Atop the Fourth Wall, where bad comics burn. Turns out that after I powered down last time, all my injuries returned. So, uh, just hang on a second. Uh, let's zoom zero one. Was there an inspiration for Dr. Linksano's look? Uh, we'll talk about that a little bit when we get to Dr. Linksano's appearance and well, you'll see how he shows up. <laughs> Danny Feynman, power down, instantly collapses. Oh, God! My fever is in my torso! <laughs> I think that happened during my putt during the Power Ranger stream game that I'm on. Morphin time! And also, I still had the, had the, the morphing sequence, so I might as well just reuse that. <laughs> I gotta remake that for you at some point. I love that sequence. Anyway, I know the schedule said I was going to review The Wanderers number 5, but after last week, Poya told me that I should review something that shows that robots aren't necessarily trying to annihilate humankind. Also because it was not that bad. 
This comic is goofy, silly, and stupid. But hey, it's the Silver Age, so what do you expect? And after all I've been through, it's just a relief to review something where the robots weren't evil or anything. Though after all of that, I do have to wonder, who broke the continuity alarm? Okay, yeah, it was Link saying who broke the continuity alarm. <laughs> <laughs> Indeed, who could have broken it? All right, so the first proper appearance of Dr. Link Sano. Uh, I cannot for the life of me recall exactly where I got that jacket from. I want to say it was one of my uncles who just like, uh, uh, like got it from a flea market or something. Supposedly, I think it was like a proper World War II jacket. Like, uh, 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 jacket, uh, you know, trench coat from that time period. Uh, the lighting inside of it has just been slowly destroyed over the years. Uh, I could still wear it. The reason why I stopped wearing it was because, uh, another reviewer called the Critical Marine, uh, donated to me one, a different jacket with a, uh, with an actual, like, monogram Dr. Linksano on it. And I was like, this, you, I gotta use the monogrammed one. So okay. we can think... uh, that yeah that answers my question. I was about to ask, was it actually there? But you know, it's not. It's not even the same jacket. Yeah, not even the same jacket. I think. I think, yeah. I think we can just classify this as his villain jacket at first. I did not have a uh, a lab jacket at the time. I didn't know where you got them from. Uh, you get them from like surplus stores and whatnot, and like medical supply companies. You know, it's easy enough to get yeah. like a white doctor's coat. Uh, the 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 Insano goggles are just something you get from Spirit Halloween. Uh, I wanted to differentiate him from Dr. Insano by, ha by you know, especially by setting him up here as, as you know, kind of a, a proper supervillain look to him. You know, black, uh, black gloves, black, uh, black shirt, the gray jacket. It all looks very cool and sleek and simple. Uh, but then, of course, then we, like, set, and then we actually, like, hit it with the, with the, uh, with the slapstick. It does look very Doc Ock. Hmm. Very dark out, yeah. <laughs> Why, it's almost as if the continuity alarm knew. Well, it's phrase for like Sano's accent, like how'd you come with his accent? It was just doing a Doctor Insano impression. Through <laughs> and now is an entire new universe to conquer. The world belongs to Doctor Link Sano. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you can tell you can tell right when the mask uh uh the ma where the mask happens is like as soon as because the lighting suddenly changes due to the shadow yeah. change, but yeah. It's good. It's very good. I don't know why I'm laughing so much. <laughs> uh. I also uh, the, the twitching there it was unintentional. It's just it's just I had to loop the footage to make it last longer of, of Linksano standing there, you know, you know, as if he was just hit. But it kind of works to the advantage. Yes. Yeah, it looks like it's, it looks like a, like a out yep. out out. And I heard something. Oh well, time to make waffles. Invader Zim reference. <laughs> Come on, Rob, that couldn't have even sounded remotely good to you. This comic sucks. The story isn't even a story. The article is full of bullcrap, and someone once thought that it should be called Dooman. Sometimes I really hate Doomans. this job. Dude, Dooman's isn't a bad name. <laughs> <laughs> oh. So... Uh, even though it's t it says undisclosed location down the hall, again referencing my brother's old uh, bedroom, which is now which was, uh, turned into storage, uh, this is actually just the other side of the f uh, you know, of my room, of oh, my bedroom at the time. Yeah. You know, the futon is over on the right there, and this is my, my computer desk because I wanted him I to like you. have like monitors that he was like watching these events unfold from. Uh, Lilith's greatest regret in storyline, the Goddess of Champions. <laughs> no, I I'm will. kidding. I, I, you know, I still like the idea of the Goddess of Champions, even if things 
went have have gone wrong. I'd say my biggest regret in the storyline is probably uh uh I don't know like, like there's a lot of stuff that I that I think I could have done better, but I don't know if I regret a lot of stuff with them. Uh. Maybe, like, I, I bringing in people for certain stuff, but, like, that's not a huge big deal in the grand in scheme of things. Because, like, you know, I make decisions based on what I have, not uh, not planning for the future. Biggest regret was having Pilo lose. I have to agree with that sentiment. Just a high you wait, grade. Linkara. If you hate your job now, wait yeah, until I get through with you. you. <laughs> now, to see what sort of... Things my counterpart in this universe has been up to. Damn that insano! He invented the anti magic field generator kit before I could! You, can you tell what just came out on Spoonie's side? Yep, the anti magic field generators. Yep, I, there's not. Uh, how many monitors do you have in that room? Two, same as same as this one uh, as currently. I can't remember. If some, they, they might some of these might be the same monitors. I can't remember. Anyway, yeah, uh, just like mentioning spoony stuff, but like uh, like like we're gonna slowly build up to a confrontation because I knew that the finale of it would be uh, we were filming Kickassia and doing the sequel to the Warrior review. And he even managed to get the dongly thing to work. Oh, mark my words, there's only room in this universe for one truly mad scientist! And as soon as I destroy Linkara, I'll... Some of us are trying to sleep around here. Keep your megalomani aqua rents to yourself. Poyo, who the hell are you talking to? I don't know. Whoever's living in the storage room. What? Oh, damn it, 90s kid! I told you to stop crashing here! You leave me no choice! Puyo, activate the fumigation security system! Uh oh. I mean, <laughs> you can insult me! I got a thick skin! Yep, yeah, again, it's. It, 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 uh, you know, Dr. Link Sano is supposed to be completely You're ineffectual. Taking your life in your own hands! Yep. Defending the honor of your grandmother! Extreme! Having a ship that looks like a gun. Uh, I forgot what the Extreme! reference was there. Uh, I didn't misspell his name. Uh, oh, Vice. It was, it was something Vice. Yep. Um, it, it, it was his only his Vice's conquest. There you go. Because I like to reference future events and the extreme things. Dear Lord, I hate you. Want to be yep, totally? You, you want to be really into it? To the moon, Alice. You're referencing bash. Sleepwalker this far back. Hey. <laughs> Good. That comic got to keep you busy for a while. The future has been such a thing to affect you and yours in the future. <laughs> uh, the reference to the big finish doctor ought to play Jeff is the grayest sits oh, inside your head. Those are the same gloves that Mechacara wore, too. There's the the Darth Vader gloves. Hmm. Uh, random number guy, and so Link Sano became Moarte. <laughs> <laughs> so Poyo is aware of Dr. Link Sano. He just, it's just like, even he's just like, yeah, hey, this isn't, Linkara, this isn't, uh, uh, uh yeah. Your oh, who the hell Roblox here? Roblox Noob 12, 2020. No, nostalgic critics so freaking, so freaking out over a bad credit card? <laughs> Basically the same thing as freaking out over that. Yeah. Uh, hey everybody, welcome to Atop the Fourth Wall where bad comics burn. I don't actually know what's going on right now. The return of Sultry Teenage so. Super Fox has brought about a... It's morphin' time! I, uh, uh, since I knew uh, that would be a popular episode, I figured, hey, oh, why don't we why don't we oh, set up Vice this. a little bit while also oh, yeah, having, thanks. like, you know, brief cameo by Mechakara. Won't do you any good anyway. Even though Mechakara, I, th I think at this point, was not intended to come back. Your mind hmm. is retreating into itself due to stress. You received a comic that you didn't think could possibly exist. A second issue of Sultry Teenage Super Foxes. 
Oh, but wow. yeah, it's like, you know, try to do fan Why favorite stuff you uh, of, you know, right off the bat here. It's like, I, like, so, like some fan service by including Mechacar in this dream sequence. Gorn's the expert, you get the goggles. Uh, yeah, Spirit Halloween. You have that badass half metal face thing going for you. You have a very poor imagination. Oh, right, yeah. You will be returning to your own mind soon enough. Oh, good. Uh, got anything else for me? Oh, how does how, how does Mechakara know about Vice, or at least in this dream? Yeah. What the hell does that mean? The Kool Aid Man yeah. is red. Spatiotemporal uh, awareness. There you go. So it was all a dream. <laughs> they didn't really make a second. Oh, Eliza got it right. Kool Aid Man's red. No. Uh, <laughs> you know, I'm now mockingly, I now jokingly want to make up a mock cover for a sultry teenage super foxes number three. <laughs> Uh, how annoying is it to see uh, see out of the Linksano goggles anyway? A bit, it's a bit, because uh, what you wouldn't actually expect is actually kind of orange-reddish on the other side. Uh, probably just for the sake of the effect of the of the Google sp uh, of the googly spirals on the other side. So it's not great to see out of. I mean, you could probably walk around with it pretty effectively, but it's not, uh, uh, you know, going, but it's not going great when you're trying to, like, you know, do a lot of stuff in it or, like, read off a teleprompter or anything. Uh, yeah, I've looked at those goggles, so yeah, I know. And and at this point, I was figuring that all uh, all the storyline finales would be Power Rangers homages. So at this point, so I started setting up the Zeonizer. Hmm. So because I like okay, we're gonna have yo 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 ha do the we had the original Mighty Morphin stuff for Mechakara for for Vice. We'll do Z we'll do uh, Zeo. So like. Uh, uh, we'll, we'll, like, set up that we're doing, like, you know, experimentation on more stuff via this, via this intro to the Athena number one review with me, like, loading up the Xeonizer crystal in it. Of and of course, the original burns. toy of the uh, Zeonizer, uh, so, and I actually, uh, created, uh, straps right for them, because the straps would not fit you know, on my adult hands. I get a comment <laughs> uh, instead, is there, like, elastic I bands around them? So much time criticizing the depiction to be sure, I did the same with my dual disc. <laughs> not since Superman and Earth's End, if I <laughs> so Did I get the Legacy Zeonizer? Hell yeah. And that means... That Those wrist strap fits. Shock of all shocks. Where does the Xeonizer come from? Uh, oh, that's explained in Gun and Sorcery. <laughs> it's basically, to it is the toys. Did you ever do in space? <laughs> Technically. Damn it! <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think I couldn't find the gloves at that, at that day, and that's why he wasn't wearing them. Although, where did the magic gun and lighter go? Pocket dimension. Pocket dimension. Excuse me. Basically, Poyo doing doing all the cleanup behind the scenes. And yeah, you can see the green screen on the side there. The the, the lime green sheet that was just hanging up on the wall. And here I thought that was just a bad paint job. <laughs> nope. Oh, really? Oh, yes. You see, what I've got here is a black light event generator. <laughs> Referencing stuff from JLA Act of God. Continuity Aaron Oak. I just said uh, I couldn't find <laughs> the clubs that day. Simple, you see. It can warp reality as I wish. Either. I have the most menacing cardboard do. robot ever. Man, I've actually, I've also used, you know, like, green and blue sheets. It's amazing. It's really amazing just how easily they can show up as white. Um, <laughs> oh, yeah, and the uh, the prop there, that is the uh, tricorder from the 2009 Star Trek movie. It's very tiny. Super G Bros, Crimson Rogue did his own version of Link Sano, except his name is Sven, and he is not a scientist, but an engineer, steampunk engineer. Right. Yeah.
think it's one of the last times we have the, uh, uh, it's one of the last times we see the, yeah, we see the gang. All right, the spirit crossover with, with Film Brain. So, full confession, I hadn't seen the goddamn movie yet. <laughs> so, like, I probably would have different reactions to some of it, but, like, sometimes I, I what is it, what is this, a crossover episode? Yeah. Uh, back when Matthew did Bad Movie Beatdown, and he did, and this was, uh, this was during the filming of Kick-Ass, yeah? That's why I'm wearing a Game Heroes shirt. Uh, the Game Heroes was a thing set up by, uh, 8-Bit Mickey and Handsome Tom. Uh, it was, it was kind of their answer to Screw Attack at the time. Uh, they were heavily associated with that guy with the glasses. Uh, well, well, Film Brain wrote the script, so so I don't know if it's fake critic, because most of it was his opinions, but I echoed some of his opinions, you know, actually when I eventually did watch the damn thing, because the spirit sucks! Yes, it just, wa yes, it it just wants to be more Sin City, which is why it does not fit with the spirit. It's a, um, asylum film, is it not? No. Oh, okay, never mind. No, the spirit's just, it, it's just Frank Miller doing Will Eisner, and it's bad. Here's, the, like, I think you pointed this out before, Lewis, but after he wrote Sin City, that's all Frank Miller wound up being able to write. Hmm. And because, and, and since we were, we were starting to build up towards the finale, which was also filmed at, uh, uh, during Kickassia, so, like, uh, Film Brain incorporated Link Sano in, in, as, like, a minion of his. And that never went anywhere. <laughs> yeah. So let us resume. How the hell you got your hands on Iron Man 2? I can't wait to watch it. Say, Link, have you checked your watch? Oh, not yet. Uh, no. <laughs> no, no, no <laughs> it can't be. That's right. It's Miller time. <laughs> Well, Linkara, you're free to go. Yes, well, just a little message to whoever is behind this little flim-flam operation of yours. If you value your continued existence, if you have any hope of seeing tomorrow, uh, let me tell you, there's one five. thing you never, ever put in a trap. Do you know what just came out? <laughs> C can you tell what just came out? If you're smart, if you value your life, there's one thing you never ever put in a trap. And what's that, Me. sir? What 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 just came out, game show reviewer? Oh, uh, clearly, uh, it's it, you know beyond a doubt that um, uh, uh, Babylon Five season three had just come. I'm kidding. Doctor Who season five. Doctor Who season five with Matt Smith, his first series, and the uh, and and him saying that to the weeping angels. I w I actually fairly recently rewatched those episodes. They actually hold up a lot better on rewatch. But oh yeah, the, but the concept of the of the angels speaking through other people was always kind of dumb. It's but well, at least rather... at the very least. The the person who they the, the the person the character they chose to speak through, it does not work. It really does not work. But the actual episodes themselves actually hold up a lot better than I remembered they did. A lot of yeah, Matt Smith's like episodes that. do that. Mm. Season five as my absolute favorite of the, of New Doctor Who, and yes, Eleventh Doctor is my Doctor. Hey, it's the most famous quote of the Galaxy Detective revival. <laughs> my favorite Doctor will always be the Third Doctor. And you know what? It's still actually thematically appropriate because for what ended up happening with the ending to the Vice Arc. So it all it all comes around, Gary. Very true. <laughs> Me. Although I love how you quote a British show to the British reviewer. That's awesome. <laughs> Concentrated dose of Miller, my diabolical plans can come to fruition! <laughs> Concentrated dose of Miller. Adrian, happy 15th anniversary, Lewis. Hello Thank you. And, welcome to and here we go. Here it is. We're already at the finale of, of the Linksano part of the arc. Which means we're probably going to get to the next the next storyline. Pretty much, yeah. Chaos Nightmare, hey, Linkara, I had a thought slash question. What would you do with the retcon that undoes one more day is somehow worse than one more day? <laughs> I didn't That's think of that. 
<laughs> I hope it's not. And I really hope it's not this current storyline that's going on. Because if it is the current storyline going on. <laughs> <laughs> I've never thought of that. Anyway, oh, this was a short storyline? Yeah. It's only uh, technically the Linksano part of the arc. Like I said, I always consider it part of the Vice arc. Uh, the Linksano part is only 19 minutes long. And thus, and thus, we've been building up to the confrontation between Dr. Insano and Dr. Link Sano. Where bad comics burn. <laughs> All right, so actually, I should yeah stop for a second here. Uh, the original Warrior review was pretty much all written by Spoonie. Uh, he, I, 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 like, had some input on it, but he, but original, but much like how I wrote the Wolverine Adamantium Rage review to be mostly me, he wrote the Warrior review to be mostly him. That's why he does all the voiceover. So I wrote the Warrior number two and three review originally <laughs> to gay nerds fighting. <laughs> Indeed. Uh, and the, uh, uh, and, uh, originally it was just going to be Warrior number two. But then they like, there's not much to Warrior number two. So I was like, well, crap. I we go something as big as the Warrior review, which was hugely popular at the time. I wanted to have, uh, I, I needed it to actually like be the a proper, you know, you'll be a proper video length. So like, okay, we'll do issues two and three together. And yeah, issue three also doesn't have a huge bunch of things to say about it. So it all, it, it, it so so together they worked, and I had a bunch of like predetermined. Uh, 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 you know, when we did the original Warrior review, a lot of it was on the fly. It's like, hey, let's have another actor put on the goggles. We'll, like, you know, come up with a few a few ideas when we're actually there. But in this case, I actually planned out all the uh, parallel universes that we would see in it. Like, Silent Movie Universe, Tommy Wiseau-verse, uh, uh, and all that jazz. Joshua, uh, Squag, I believe it is. Will and Carr get his own TARDIS. No, that that's that's a little outside. That that that's you know, a spaceship is already is already breaking the power scales a bit. Having a, having a time machine that can look like anything and like infinite storage, that's a little much. Besides, that would technically be ripping off Zen, <coughs> who's already admitted to ripping off of you. So yes, how can you rip off the ripoff? Matrix verse, yes. <laughs> Linkara into the Insanoverse. Again, we're the real... We're the guys... That, we're, we're the trailblazers here. We did all this stuff before uh, any of that came out. And the universe where Linkara and Spoody dub over Lindsay Ellis and, uh, I want to say Mars Girl? That was a Spoony line, I think. If you're Dr. Linksano, does that mean in your universe I'm Spoonkara? No, 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 what? That'd just be stupid. Yeah, that was that was that was a speculation people had about Linksano. So in in, in so Linksano's universe is it Spoon Kara? What? No, that that would be dumb. <laughs> well, I was just saying. That you... Stop saying things. I, I just love how the most uh, the, the, the most uh, techno babble line in track that gets referenced the most comes from the best damn episode of Star Trek: Next Generation there is. Hmm. Taylor Robinson, who was in Kara fighting in the Contest of Champions finale. Uh, oh. anyway, I can't remember if we actually have. Say, I think I can't remember if we said it out loud or not. We have not. We have not. All right, so wait on that. Same fiend. I'm not gonna read that shit again. Man, I suppose we could get the same results by watching TNA Impact. Yeah, all right, I'll read it. Did this maniac even pay attention to people? First, Spears of Iron Liz. I just started dating her, and I thought it'd be funny if we like just like had something cut to her as 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 one of the alternate universes. I don't understand how any sane human being can let this man release multiple tributes to his utter insanity. It doesn't matter what you think, Linkara. I probably have to mute this again. I remember that the that this fight scene actually gets uh, uh, gets VOD muted a lot. And there we have. They finally meet. See, it's starting. All our realities are starting to coexist simultaneously. And everyone wanted in on the uh, uh, on this finale as well. They wanted in on the Warrior Review because they all loved the, the original Warrior Review too and thought it was hilarious. So like, let's just you know buy a bunch of goggles from Spirit Halloween and, do, and, and, and like have as many insanes as possible. 
Jesus! That guy, you don't know. Purpose. Right. Purpose. Gordon ZX, what's TNA Impact? It's a wrestling show. Yep. And Spoonie at the time was doing uh, uh, vlogs of him watching it and, and complaining about how bad it was. Hence the clip. They, and he was abducted by ninjas! Ninjas! Call the cops! Lone Wolf, Lone hey Lakara, I have a quick question. Do you still plan on doing a retrospective on the 90s Spider-Man series? Yes, it's uh, it's one of my Patreon... Well, I was going to say one of my Patreon milestone goals, but actually, Patreon is removing milestone goals. For some oh. stupid reason. you got to be kidding me! Yeah, it's really dumb. It is incredibly oh. dumb. But we'll probably... I'll probably do something with it down the line. Maybe that'll be a retrospective, because as, I, as I'm as i going to mention in the next major retrospective, uh, I don't... Uh, I'm running. I don't really have much Marvel, much more Marvel stuff to cover for retrospectives. Because as a reminder, the retrospectives are supposed to be uh, uh, videos based off of what you know, uh, 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 d what I my development as a comics fan, and most of my development is DC. A wrestling company started up in 2002 to compete with WWE, now known as Impact Wrestling. Yep. There are ninjas kidnapping people on TV. Uh, back in uh, the days when I used to watch wrestling. Now, oftentimes, I will incorporate Fanon into canon because I think just it's just a good idea. So, in this case, a lot of fans were speculating that Dr. Linksano was one of the brothers of a video that's uh, from from what Spoonie had referenced had had made. It was this. V it was either a VH one of the VHS tape shows or one of his uh, or just a video on like a weird board game uh, called like Dream Phone. Yeah. Basically, it was this weird, uh, you know, game for girls where, like, oh, my God, if you, 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 you call on the phone and you get to date hot guys, oh, no, you got the nerd, you got the Schlumper Brothers. It's actually not a bad detective game. <laughs> uh, Roblox, Oxnod, 12, 20, 20, 20, 20. Hey, that's the old video with like, like, Crosser with Spooty. Is, is this your first part of this? Did you just come in? We've been doing this. This is like our second co uh, storyline commentary stream. Danny Phelan, so that oh. dates the Doctor Who Patreon Cole's jokes. A bit, yeah. Yeah. So, uh, so yeah, at the end of that video, the Schlumper Brothers, one of them turned into Doctor Insano. Now, that was always supposed to be an alternate universe Insano from his perspective, because, like... Uh, it was supposed to be like just like an alternate history, different universe. I, and Fanon was that L Link Sano was the other Schlumper brother. So I decided to turn that Fanon into canon as, uh, 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 and, and thus Dr. Link Sano is Oscar Schlumper. So what's Dr. Link Sano? Sorry, Dr. No, Dr. Link Sano is Oscar Schlumper. Dr. Insano in that universe is Wayne Schlumper. Ah, okay. Or as the Simpsons put it, hi, you got the dud. Exactly. Party Mania, that's what it was called. I had no idea there was a fan edit in this story. Uh, what is it called a fan edit? It's fanon. It's, it's like when the fans come up with their own continuity and their own theories about how things work. So why yeah. did he start calling himself Link Sano? Uh, because no one took him seriously when they call all him, uh, when they called him Oscar. When he called himself Os- Hello, I'm Dr. Oscar Schlumper! Fear me! Yeah, no one's gonna take that seriously worth anything. Exactly. Well, they might have called him taking this seriously because I'm Dr. Oscar the Grouch. There you go. Anyway, let us begin. Like I said, I'm gonna have to mute some of the audio for a bit because that kept getting claimed. And uh, and by the way, the uh, the VOD release of the first commentary stream is missing 20 seconds because uh, another piece of music got claimed. Fortunately, it wasn't during any important commentary, but still. Oh, nice. We're trying to dodge it. Yep. These are finger lights. You could buy them at like grocery stores or or some places or, or some novelty places. And I thought, hey, these would be good for just like a little visual representation of finger beams. <laughs> um. Okay, I I'm gonna go knock off for the day. Fine. Maybe I can't beat you, but maybe an entire team of insanos can beat you. 
Yeah, this is the big finale of the Insano stuff. We're just going to have two teams of Insanos coming together. We have of all the Kikassia cameos. Yeah, awk yeah, some some awkwardness here because of course because yeah, uh yeah because of Juario. There's no way, there's no way around it. It happened, you know, it happened. We didn't know at the time. Oh yeah, I, I found that that other grabby thingy in the in a uh, thrift shop. I mean, and both of us brought a bunch of book lights and finger beam lights. Uh, we brought a few extra go pairs of goggles. Hey, <laughs> Bit Mickey. <laughs> That's like a book light that we use as a neuralizer. There are alternate versions of I, I know there's alternate versions of Insano goggles out there that are like different colors. So like there's a purple one there. <laughs> so much mugging. And Joe and, yes. and I love this Barry with Benzai is ba basically Benzai is. It's where Barry is a me is basically a mech pilot, the real one in control of like a dead Benzai or something like that. And Phil Brain just kicking ass with his own finger I and mean, stuff. This is like Playboy go, Mars Girl. But that's my favorite. Just turn turn to the camera. Science. That's Phalos on the ground. I think Eight Bit Mickey is like stomping on him. Uh, Alejandro Enrique Valdez. Uh, I can't pronounce that last name. Hi from Argentina, Linkara. Huge fan of your work. Thank you so much. Hope you're enjoying the commentary. So much mugging in this. So much over the top. It was just supposed... Like I said, this is supposed to just be a fun storyline where, you know, where it's a breather. It's, it's just goofy. It's not supposed to be taken seriously. And thus, we end on, on this fight of, of all the alternate Insanos. I thought it was pretty damn good. And it's people nice. seem to like it, too. So, the effects... question. Yeah, go ahead. Go ahead. Oh, sorry. Uh, I was actually going to say, um, I had not heard the term uh, knock off for the day uh, until I watched your show, to be honest. So is that what it's... Uh, that con the, I first uh, heard that in Mystery Science Theater. Ah, uh, okay. I think I, think, I think I first heard it like in The Deadly Mantis, where, where like uh, Tom Servo was trying to do... Uh, uh, was trying to do casual day on the satellite, but as Mike pointed out, we're not a business, so why do we need business casual? <laughs> so, so after like Tom Servo like, like goes off crying because no one wants to participate in casual day, uh, Crow says they'll be right back. And Gypsy is like, "Am I done?" Crow replies, "Yeah, you can knock off for the day." Ah, okay. Mike VLTG three Playboy Mars Girl brings back spooning with spoony flashbacks. Yeah. Tama Smolka, who is filming this? Uh, pretty much anybody, because we had like everybody else, or, you know, everybody else around who was filming Marsing with Mars Girl. Since everybody else is around to like, you know, participate in all this, I think I just looped everyone laughing in the background for like sa during the sound effects. This is a cramped hotel room, so like, don't try to follow any continuity, scene continuity from shot to shot. Well, that's the whole point. It's not supposed to be continuity worth a damn anyway. Exactly. So, so like, everyone was around to film stuff for us. But it was crossover. Were you guys in a hotel? Yes. Like I said, we were filming Kigassia. This is in uh, Nevada. I love Where Barry Sano. Everybody loves Barry Sano. The different grabby things. Nipple twister. Yes, we can join forces. I'm going to mute again because the music in the background is bound to probably get claimed. When are hotels not cramped? Good point. But yeah, filming in hotel rooms. An, an old ass tradition. <laughs> and because we're doing another warrior review, we just have like everyone, you know, basically the same ending. Someone took a photo there and just left it in. Well, it works. I mean, it works as like a, an effect or something. Shoe on head, uh, uh, I'd say no. Well, there's <laughs> always 
And for some reason, like, I think the autofocus, like, 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 got screwed up, so we just, so, so like, it starts off blurry there for some reason, but there was nothing we could really do. I think that was the better of the two shots, because it eventually became focused again. What do you bring back hyper time? And then I figured in the end, you know what? Let's actually, let's do some storyline set. Uh, let's do some storyline set up with that too. Undisclosed House of Science. Because we just had, we just had this finale. We just had this big finale with, with Link Sano, but like now we need to actually start going. We need to start going serious. Uh, so what would be a cool way to to end the uh, uh, to end this finale? Let's bring in. Uh, Mechacara again. By that point, I decided we were going to have Mechacara back and work as a minion for Vice briefly, because uh, Vice was no longer going to be a Power Rangers finale. We're going to have a, uh, uh, we're going to have something different. We'll have, you know, Mechacara st fights be Power Rangers. Everything else be, like, something different. I think like, Spoonie was, like, not available to do, either he's not available to do, like, a, like a live-action bit for this, or, or just, like, you know, he was just, you know, exhausted from the trip, so instead he just did voiceover for it. This is my old bathroom, and I kept the Mechacara mask. Bring it back, bring it back to Doctor Who March of the Cybermen music. And that's it, that's the Link Sano arc. So the ultimate question from that is, will Hypertime ever return? I mean, I reference it on occasion. I might be making, I might oh. be bringing it back for a thing, but like, back, back in the day when you only played three or four characters. Good times. No kidding. That was short. Like I said, I always consider this part of the Vice arc. That's why I it was so so short. But looks a bit like Kano's face bite. DJ Toku, you should watch the commentary for the first one. For the first yeah. storyline. And now we come to all that he sees, he conquers. Yep. Or, I think, uh, okay. Most fan compilations before the official ones would typically break this up into first Linkara Lost, then a story of magic, then all that he sees, he conquers. Who is Microsoft Sam? Microsoft Sam is a program that Microsoft used to have for just a voice, uh, a text-to-speech program. They removed it after a certain point, and I used Microsoft Sam for for uh, Poyo's voice. So the Mega Cars oh, yeah. exist in all of his remains? Curious if true. Uh, not always. In this case, it was because the effects of hypertime restored him to life. All right, that was Link Sano. Time for Vice. So actually, uh oh, wow, well, there's something that's the volume down a bit more on this. All right, so uh, once the theme song is, is is clear, I'll start talking about my inspirations for the Vice stuff. If the Vice did ever get the Contest Champions, how far would he go? He probably would have won it. I uh, had to go refill my drink. Go right ahead. Uh, I'll pause. I'll pause for it in a second here once we're done with the theme uh, song. I, I, I already did. I already oh, okay. Did. Once again, uh, all these edits include the uh, theme song from the last episode in the arc, which makes sense, especially because at this point I had more widescreen clips I could use. Yep. All right. So, Lord Vice. Uh, so on, so as I said, I got together with Will and Amethyst right, uh, uh, you know, when the Mechacara arc, uh, uh, was released, when, it, when, when, when the finale was done and put out there, we all got, to, we got together and we had dinner and we started planning out some ideas for the next villain because, uh, because Amethyst was going to create the costume for Lord Vice and we still have that costume downstairs. 
So the first part, so uh, the few ideas I had was uh, a black, silver, and green color scheme. Uh, I wanted uh, a helmet, like a full, you know, like a full suit, and I wanted something similar to Tommy's shield from Power Rangers. And I it'd be just like you know evil because I like the idea of like that triangular shield. You know, it's it's very it's like aesthetically just very pleasing. Uh, yeah. And the and the name we I, I obviously the inspiration there is Lord Zed, but with Vice especially the uh, what I what I took from that is let's give me a name that's one syllable. You know something. You know it's very easy to say, easy to remember. And we, we, we brainstormed a couple of names, and Vice was what we settled on, but spelled with a Y because poor literacy is cool. Fourth Wall Kid, have you ever considered doing a review as Vice? Yes, but the, but, but the problem is I'd have to have a good reason for Vice to do it because Vice wouldn't give a crap. Nick Wolf, in-universe, how does Ankara feel about the contest being long? Outside holidays, less people have been trying to murk him. Relative peace for five years. You're going to enjoy the finale. Yeah, although that is actually a fair point. Yeah. Well, stuff keeps still happening during Halloween. True. <laughs> although my personal favorite is uh, when I put that little reference in to the uh, Temlin who said, you know, if I still had an ass, I would have laughed it off, but you blowing up your own house. Mm. All right, so... Uh, Charles Lazard, how'd you meet Will? I talked about this in the mech in the last storyline one, but basically he was there when I went to see Amethyst to, uh, fix up a prop, and that's how we were first introduced, because the two of them were friends already. Uh, Mike V L T G 3 fun that you said you could design a better villain in History of Power Rangers, and here we are now. <laughs> yeah? Technically, if you think about it, Vice is kind of like Lord Draken, and you created him, like, what? How many years before Lord Draken? <laughs> Uh, World's Greatest Villain was a game made by a bunch of fans uh, who asked me to uh, asked me to have uh, uh, you know Mechakara and Doctor Linksano be cameos inside of it like, like cards. Their website and their game long since defunct, unfortunately. Uh, we could never figure uh, Liz and I could never figure out how to play it. Like we tried once, but we but like the rules were not very specific, unfortunately. Uh, but they were very nice people, so they gave me a copy of the game, and so I was like, ah, I might as well promote it. Uh, with Linksano's departure. Also, uh, just a little note there on the lower third. I forgot I did that. Uh, note noting which of the three arcs this is. Yes, this was called this officially. This was called the Linkara Lost Mini Arc. And the first Tandy Computer Whiz Kids review. And this was pre-theme song for this bit right here. Because I wanted to start, you know, introducing... Okay, Linksano is done with... We're going to start our, getting someone much more menacing to come in. Fourth Wall Kid, we will get your super chat in a minute. Nick Lenz, how did you meet Spoonie? Uh, I first officially met him at the brawl. I think we had done some talking beforehand on Skype. Because a lot of us did when we were on that guy with the glasses. So we just also like, you know, exchange, you know, we started talking to each other. There was a brief group chat, I think, that eventually evolved into the official one we had. Uh, actually, I'm going to reduce the size of this very quickly so it's still inside the lines of the thingamabob. There we go. Let's resume this. I wasn't going to say anything. Uh, Adrian, uh, he did say Halloween is cursed. Yep. Indeed, the card game for me. It's just what I needed after getting stomped in the face by a bunch of nerds. Still, I think I'm starting to like this dimension. Insano is far too busy taking care of that genetic accident he calls a son. Uh, Spoonie had just released a video where, where I can't remember what which episode it was, but like he, he introduced Son of Insano, which is this little blobby thing with like eyes on it. Be a true science villain. So I guess that task falls onto me. Talk I had no cat. idea you guys had a card game. No, I didn't have the card game. Uh, it was fans who asked uh, to have have Linksano and uh, Mechacar as playable cards. Street Fighter 2010. That was it. Yeah. Fourth Wall Kids uh, Super Chats came in. Have you ever considered making an atop the Fourth Wall storyline comic book series? No, because. Uh, I feel like if I'm going to be doing something in a new medium, I should have an original story for it. Some people have offered to create comic adaptations of it before, which I applaud, I'm all in favor of, but when they want to work with me on it, it's like, 
I feel like if you're going to do this, we should have something original and not just adapt something that's already existing. So anyway, yeah, Linksano's here to stay. Every, yo, he's going to be the one in charge. He's going to be the main villain. Uh-oh. Just immediate tone change. He's coming. He's coming! This comic sucks! The characters are inhuman, the story meanders away from <clears throat> whatever points it's trying to make, and there is no action whatsoever! Still, it was a lot more entertaining than Q-Unit, so I guess... <laughs> oh, it's you. What do you want? Oh, hello, Linkara. I was just coming to say goodbye. Coming to say goodbye, and you say hello. Never mind. You what, say leaving? goodbye, and yeah, I just say hello. Out of this dimension while I still can. <laughs> oh, did the beatdown that we gave you and the other insanos make you all scaredy weary? <laughs> I love that. I needed to make sure that his that 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 his that his laugh. Like, 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 yo, yo, instead of eliciting, like, like, fear, it's just like, like, haha, we're making fun of you, you, you suck. Like, he just laughs at that. And it's like the most intense laugh he had ever done just to show, like, 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 wait, did everything suddenly get, did, did the tone suddenly change in here? Because, like, like, wait, why are you, you reacting like that? Yep. Just that cackle. I'm glad, yeah, people people recognize that was the intention. I needed to make it his strongest laugh ever at the idea of, oh no, I'm not leaving because of you. I'm leaving because something much scarier than you is coming. Uh, Freeway Night asking, uh, I'm sure Link Carr mentioned this already, but I not only came that long ago, where does the teleporty sound come from? Star Trek: The Original Series. Yep, Star Trek: The Original Series. It was a it was a sound they used a lot, particularly with uh, Trelane, the Squire of Gothos. Uh, and I think by that point, I'd finally gotten a copy of it that didn't have the harpsichord in the background too. <laughs> <sighs> oh, you sad, stupid, silly little comic book nerd! Did you ever stop and wonder why I left my universe to begin with? Well, no, but then again, I'm still trying to reconcile this whole Spoonie is Dr. Insano thing, which I still don't entirely believe, given what I saw happen before with- Ha! You incompetent little worm. There are forces in the multiverse far beyond anything you've ever dealt with. Ancient- We have uh, Ave Satane in the background here. In the words of Mr. Popo, well, that's definitely ominous. Well, that's definitely ominous. Spoony is Dr. Insano. No, that can't be it. Like I said last time, uh, yo, just never acknowledge, does not believe it, thinks it, thinks it's, 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 it's crap. Or, uh, Sus from Gravity Falls. <laughs> Good luck sleeping tonight. Yep. <laughs> Weep for your universe, then, Kara. Black Dragon Knight, Link, Link Sando's reason for leaving his universe has been altered a lot over the years. I wouldn't say it's been altered huge amounts. Uh, he, what he said was, like, I, he fled, he fled because Lord Vice was coming, but he admits he probably would have left anyway just because there was nothing for him in his original universe. Uh, yeah, Tava Smallgo, I wonder what the background music in the scene. Ave Satana, uh, or Satani, either way, it's from, it's, uh, from Legend, if I recall correctly. Mm-hmm. Or is it? Actually, I think, you know, this might have been, this might have been more... Uh, uh, Ren and Stimpy music actually come to think of it. I, I, I think I'm confusing Ave Satana with something else. Could be. But the point is, yeah, it's either the stock music or it's the music from Legend. Either way, it's, you know, it's designed exactly for this purpose. And it's definitely, I think it's another track that unfortunately got claimed, so I had to, like, uh, uh, reduce it a bit. Ave Satani is the omen. Okay. So, yeah, I'm thinking of, I'm still thinking of the wrong one. I used that one, I've used that one before, too. Uh, Danny Fenlon, Spoonie is insane. Oh, Linkara, fake news. <laughs> and all that he sees Next thing you'll be saying is Bruce Wayne is... 
And the first and the first proper thing, all that he sees, he conquers. Which is itself, uh, once again, a Lord Zed reference. Uh, reference to uh, when he first appeared in Mighty Morphin Power Rangers. I am Lord Zed, Emperor of all I see. So I took that as all that I see, I conquer. And yeah, that became the unofficial uh, name of the storyline. And eventually the official name of it. Although, once again, I think originally it was just the Vice arc originally. <laughs> I much prefer the, uh, the more eloquent titles for the uh, arcs. Yep. <laughs> Welcome, guys. All right, so uh, several people at the time had been in, in expressing an interest. Excuse me, in uh, other in the other characters of a top the fourth wall doing reviews. So when I came up with the idea of the Linkara Lost mini arc, uh, this was also to properly introduce Iron Liz to people. Because uh, we were dating at the time, and she wanted to start doing her own videos. And I thought, hey, we can use me as a springboard for your stuff. Uh, now, just just to get this, just to preface this, Liz and I are not associated anymore. We are not friends anymore. Uh, various reasons, primarily uh, her, her politics. Uh, and yeah, we're not going to get into it deeper here, because we're not here to talk about... Real life stuff. We're here to talk about stuff that was happening at the time. But needless to say, we are not. We are uh, not. We are not friends anymore. Uh, one, one second. One second. Uh, Linkara, the uh, the owner of this live stream, the skipper of the show, your moderator here, who is like two <coughs> steps below you, will now remind you of rule number eight. You are banned. Oh no! No! <laughs> yeah, yeah, really. I had to. Yeah, we leave real life at the door here. Politics ruining friendships. Classics. Yeah. But anyway, so, uh, I had had a few episodes lined up that I was like, okay, we can have this. Uh, uh, I thought Liz was trans. She is. So, yeah. the, so yeah, the, uh, right. the idea was like, okay, I will give the people what they want. We'll try to do a few episodes with my other characters. Uh, and with this case, we had Harvey Feinweiss doing Anita Blake, the Laughing Corpse, because people still had, uh, still trans rights. Yeah, trans rights are human yeah. rights, are civil rights. Yeah. Sorry, I was, I was, I was choking on my drink there when, when, uh, uh, when this one came up. I blanked for a second. Are you no longer friends with Harvey? Yeah, screw that guy. <laughs> <laughs> So, uh, so yeah, I, like, Anita Blake was one that had been heavily requested by people at the time, because, uh, I want to say that, uh, there was a popular comics blogger, I can't remember their name off the top of my head, uh, but they had been doing recaps of Anita Blake, and the Anita Blake comics are bad, but the problem oh, is, yeah. like, I'm only so familiar with, with the Anita Blake stuff, so, like, sure, I could make fun, the question is, who plays Harvey Fine Voice? I don't know, some asshole. Uh, so, uh, to, uh, so like, uh, so like, I figured, uh, okay, we can have him cover the, we can have him do this. We can have Harvey sing at the end. Dilf or Zaddy? I've never come across Zaddy before. Oh, I'm sorry. I gotta say this. Hey, Linkara, you're still the only reviewer I, who I never see with sponsors in their videos. And it's that on purpose. This chat, by the way, brought to you by NordVPN. <laughs> no, no, this, this, this. This this commentary stream brought to you by uh, Cuba Cola. Ah yes. Leave a comment oh. to, uh, to in the chat to talk about your favorite flavors of Cuba Cola. How bad are the books? Uh, a lot of it comes back to the fact that that the Anita Blake books themselves are bad. Uh, it's like the, the like the recurring critique I remember them saying about it is for a, for a book called Anita Blake Vampire Hunter, she seems to do very little vampire hunting. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I prefer cherry Coca Cola. I'm more of a heat tap um, guy. I am weary of the KFC flavored Coca Cola. Uh, I will go with personally the uh, uh, theoretical cantaloupe. Yeah, Ciro, the books basically became porn. And yeah, much like that, like much like you know, other instances, I tried to do the review of just the first issue, and there was not enough material to cover for it. So, like, it was very weird trying to write for Harvey. It was very different because, of course, 
when you're writing for other characters trying to do a review, when you're doing your own review, it's your opinions, but the way you present them, the kind of jokes they would make, it's much, much harder to actually, you know, verbalize it in this format because they don't normally do it. Recall that from the last time, Harvey was supposed to get his own show, and, th and that would have had its own review style, but it would have been very different from atop the fourth wall, and I was worried that people wouldn't want to watch something that wasn't still uh, 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 structured like atop the fourth wall. Anyway, let's uh, resume here. Because we have an hour and a half to go through for the uh, for the Vice arc. Is that why you didn't attempt uh, anything like, say, uh, One Box of the Damned or... Um, or uh, why am I blanking on the name of your other show? What's the name of your other show? Late Night Double Feature. Thank you. Is that why you never attempted anything like that until, like, 2008? No, because like I said, I wrote up one script of a Harvey Fine Voice show. It's just I never got around uh, filming it, and, it, and it just became less and less relevant as time went on. And I was, like, you know, busy doing other stuff. So, Harvey here. Uh, once again, we're back over to my brother's office, uh, his, to his old room. And uh, so now, okay, we're like we we we've established. Oh, the other characters are doing the reviews, but now we're establishing what the hell happened to Lincaro. We're trying to hunt him down, and Poyo is basically taking charge. Up there, little guy, I knocked him dead. You gonna need me next week? No, I have someone else lined up. I think this is the no, Windows Media oh, Player like out. default thing at the time. If that you didn't dark. have. Uh, no, uh, it is very difficult to if you didn't have like visual videos playing, it just had random colors and shapes. I was like, uh, yeah, this looks cool. This is this is Poyo looking through the multiverse. I loved that stuff. Yeah, <sighs> you probably ran off with some broad and a low cut top. No, you don't understand. There was a powerful energy. Bunch of Power Rangers toys in the background there, because again, I was using this for storage and helping set up stuff that would happen later. Well, I see the Gold Ranger staff. Goofy you see two of the Gold Ranger I staff. That might be it. Yes. Yep. The energy signature was different from anything either Insano or Linksano. Love the visualizer ever from we Windows Media Player. Man, I used to play that all, play that all the time. Good and time. The best part is it actually, it actually looks like the graphics the say from, uh, from the, the motion Ranger. picture or from Wrath of Khan. Mm. I read to blue, and if you need anything else, just whistle. And I'll show those punks what happens when you mess with the kid. I would have gone with Windows Pipeline, it's awesome. Yes, that's the multiverse, it's it's 3D pipes. Dude, Why two gold dude, staffs? Uh, because one of them was broken, I think, or at least wasn't, was, was like dirtier. And now, 90s kid doing the video! People actually yeah, thought this yeah. was hilarious. Oh yes, it was. And that is why I included ever. the theme song, because there's no way in hell I was doing this without including the theme song. <laughs> this comic sucks! Psych! This comic is awesome! However, because I'm so bored at page... What is that? 21? Yeah. Uh, at the Let's time, I was also teasing the idea of maybe doing a 90s kid uh, video game review show. So this was kind of like proof of concept, quote-unquote. Yes. This, yes. ba this, this, ba this was my, my parents' awesome basement. Orange Octopus 7. 90s Just kid doing the theme song is still one of my favorite Wars. gags you've done. <laughs> Jack Fu. <sighs> it's totally the same as reviewing Freak Force because, like, they both have Force in their name. Uh, so, like, Evelyn it's Dude! 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 Yeah, the idea, I, I thought that uh, uh, 90s kid as, like, some kind of 
uh, a video game reviewer, particularly for Sega Genesis games, would have would, would might be funny. So this was like this was like the backdoor pilot for that, and people kind of liked it, but like it was a lot of work, and I felt like you know, and, and again, stuff just took too long. Well, I like, like to, to do a bunch of this stuff, and when I'm still trying to do regular atop the fourth wall. So you literally filmed in their basement once. I filmed in their basement like a few times. Not a huge, not a, uh, not a lot, but a few times. So let's start with the hardest settings because, you know, I'm hard. I think, I, think I did play it on hard, just, just to like, because again, 90s core. kid. Yep, that's hardcore. Yep. Uh, that was weird. Let's try again! I used to play that game so much. I didn't know this game existed wall. at the time. The fourth wall kid was, uh, was this when the MCD possessed 90s kid when the game started? Yeah, I know, right? <laughs> uh, people, yeah, people have had a very serious, I never had, like, a solid date of when it happened. Robert Wilson, hey, Lewis, when Mayor Car makes his shocking return, will he have any scars from his fight with Moarte? We'll see. Now I just get good done a better playthrough of Bart's Nightmare than a nostalgia critic. Undoubtedly. Uh, okay, maybe I should turn down the speed of difficulty. Ha! Now I'm winning! But the cool thing is that it's okay! And now I'll just keep playing. Right through the credits. Yep. And superimposing that over. And it's like, Online Harvey's like, Dear now. God, no! What, what do we do? <laughs> what have we done? What I said, do you need me next week? Part of that was the implication of, do you have some sort of freak you wouldn't rather replace with someone? So, so, su subtle uh, effects work here. That's actually me turning him. He's in a chair on, on a stacked on a bunch of boxes, and, and Harvey's arm is on the chair just slowly rotating it. Oh, nice. I didn't even catch that. Mm. Talented. The episode has already hit the internet. Nothing we can do. We ever let 90s do do a Fine, review again? Maybe. Let me handle next week. No. I've um, a time it'll have to be a time when Harvey's away. Yep. That he made in case he ever went missing or was killed. He has already picked his successor. Shouldn't you be more worried about finding the kid? Don't worry about it. I really should I not have have said I successor, and and this is trail. this is the problem we we we, we, we lead into. Uh, yeah, I got. I've also got to uh, like mute this again. Vod mute this again because we got. Uh, uh... Okay, so I should. Yo, for, right out of the gate, I should not have said. Uh, uh, this is yo my successor, because people took that seriously and thought that Iron Liz was going to be the successor to the show, and a combination of transphobia and sexism and just a bunch of people being assholes were like. We hate this. This is bad. I wrote the damn script for the episode. It, this is still a, a top the fourth wall episode written by me. And and uh, and she was not prepared for the amount of like really crappy backlash that people had to it. Uh, and she actually wanted to just outright not do the rest of the storyline. I had to convince her to st to stick around for the uh, for for the remaining episode or uh, just to try to uh, uh, not. Yeah, 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 because I needed to complete the storyline, and I get it. I really did get it, but like, like people were being like so mean and jerks about it. When again, this wasn't a top before the wall episode. I wrote the damn thing. Uh, is uh, uh, Ann Ginsburg is the fan canon? The game was the moment the entity possessed Night's Kid. Your canon or true? It was not. It was not my canon. I I had really have a. I never actually had a specific moment when it happened. When it was actually you know, becoming a thing. I like how Ninja Style Dancer is basically the mentor. That's awesome. Oh, and the other reason why he was there was like, yo, Ninja Style Dancer can't do a review unless he talks. And I've always wanted Ninja Style Dancer to never, ever speak. Like, the closest we get was the Silent Hill thing, which will come up later. Uh, but but since that's a, you know, vision, a, weir a, a hallucination, not real, you know, that's not canonically his voice. It's just the closest you'll ever get. Uh, Mike the LTG, we'll get to your uh, comment when it gets up. Meanwhile, editorializing grandstander, and I honestly don't understand what the point of it is. Vigilantes take mob bosses prisoner. So what? How about you? 
Yeah, and, and I'm just covering up the things I need up. You've gotten a lot better at, at very clearly writing the signs. Oh, hey, yep. What's your status? I localized the trail. He appears to be on a large ship in another dimension. Can you get him back? Working on it now. Shouldn't take more. So, yeah, it's a lot of. of uh, uh, yeah. So, yeah, I convinced her to stick voice. around. We got the chain gun in the background yeah, there. You did fine, kid. Gonna use more singing, though. Maybe a rendition of Nice and Easy. Oh, and next time, ditch the ninja. The guy doesn't know when to shut up. Ninja the ninja doesn't know when to shut know, up. Mr. That's always been like a background thing. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, that the, the ninja style dancer is actually super talkative whenever he's not on screen. Oh God, he's from the same dimension as Morn. So with this one, because of the backlash, we decided okay, let's uh, let's have Liz at least write. If she's gonna do this, let's have her write part of the script. So we both wrote the script together for this one, and we had Harvey on screen uh, to do more stuff. Yeah, so he's Morn. Yeah. Uh, and and we would have it be and just to, and and so instead of her doing the full review and then the storyline at the very end, we would have uh, you know Harvey around for the start. Then we would then we would have Linkara come in the middle and then resume the thing. This was like one of the few times that this actually happened on the show. But like she was she was so turned off of of doing this after the negative backlash that like okay we need to have Linkara back and doing the review or else you know people are still going to be assholes and we need to have the storyline continue and people watch it so yeah that's what we agreed and that's what we went with all these comics are just awful seriously this is also my discovery episode. of the Ewoks stuff I didn't well, realize that at Ewoks at the time sure. uh, at the time I didn't realize that Ewoks it's was its own franchise like the as I was mentioned before, my entry you, into Star Wars you was the Ewok what stuff. Do. Hmm. What, now, what was he going to review this week? Um, well, it looks like it says, Spider-Man One More Day. I'm giving in to the peer pressure. Forget about it. <laughs> There's going to be one more day. I'm what giving in to the peer pressure. <laughs> Ewoks. So Wicked swims down after him. I love, I, I love the way, I love the way she says uh, this. Ewoks. What in Ava God has forbidden past? The process to bring Linkara back has begun. Come quickly. And you got Linkara back. Not exactly. Spill the beans, baby blue. I can't get an exact we lock on Linkara. So yeah, we got that. So so now apparently we have th probably thanks to the retcon with Doctor Linksano that we that happened during the Clone Saga. Uh, now we have the explanation of like where he got the tech to actually recover to to recover uh, Linkara. The shades, the the minions of, of of Vice are just very obviously. They're a Halloween costume of just like a black cloak and black gloves and a uh, a face concealing mask. I thought it was like you know very easy for goons. Anyone can wear them. So if I need other actors to play them, boom, nice and done. And I had this dagger prop. I can't remember where the hell I got it from. Probably just a random purchase on eBay that I decided okay, just for stylistic reasons, they have these. Uh, uh, you know, daggers that, that shoot stuff, and Power Rangers music. Yes, again, because, again, storyline stuff at the time, I figured, would be Power Rangers. Where'd you get the blades? We could probably presume that Linkara enchanted them and made them a, 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 just just like he did uh, uh, you know, all of the rest of his stuff. In this case, I think they're, like, World of Warcraft things. She was really into WoW at the time. Look a lot like the Templin's costumes, lol. Yeah! <laughs> How long well, did it take you to make Winter of '83? About six, seven months, I think. Just like solely, yo, 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 know, also doing the, the the script. Who's there? Goons, goons, hired goons, hired goons. <laughs> and I think I, I've decided that any of the ones that have like the weird shrouds on them, like the like the decaying fabric, those are like. The, like, like the higher ups in their hierarchy, the more advanced ones. They're the elite ones. Some of the shades look like the cloaks from Suburban Nights, actually. You don't say. Oh, yeah, I gotta turn down the volume because, of course, yeah, Power Rangers music. Wow. Gotta love that Chicago typewriter. I had never heard that term before, but apparently, yeah, that's a thing. 
Yeah, I, I'm actually surprised you hadn't heard that term before. It's not that uncommon. See, I'd, I'd heard the term Chicago piano before, but I know that's a reference to the guns aboard uh, World War II uh, era ships, yep. especially carriers. I'm pretty sure the Chicago typewriter was even mentioned in The Untouchables. I've never seen The Untouchables. Oh, that would explain it. <laughs> Wow, I've actually seen a movie that somebody else has. The sound of that punch was, 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 was off. Excuse me, I'm distracting you so she can stab you. <laughs> I love that one. And yeah, Here. unlimited ammo! Mormon time! Nice to see you again. Naturally, it's always nice to see me. Naturally, it's always nice to see me. Four Vice's foot soldiers. They're called Shades. Man, I actually had some funny lines in the ba back in the day. Oh, it gets better. I used to be funny. What happened to me? Hey, you're still funny on occasion. They're robots. Cool, that means they can blow up. I know. Oh, but now we have the, uh, I think I just, like, like color shifted the torpedo effect that I had before. I don't know if like a flare, though. NJ Brown comics are Vice's Shadow Man is a reference to the shadows from Crest Infinite Earths. Uh, not intentionally, no, but I get why you would say that. No, it was just like, it was an easy costume to have multiple people wear and, you know, you're relatively cheap. And, you know, face concealing so you can say there are robots behind that. And again, one of the few times where we had the storyline happening in the middle of the episode. So... Uh, so, so like, it's so rare for that to occur. Like, we gotta do the, uh, uh, we gotta do the, 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 uh, the fake credits. Like, oh crap, we still got the review to do! The important thing is, I'm back, we kick ass, and I'm looking forward to a nice long vacation. Any of Short Circuit 2 music. Although, I mean, you actually could have freeze-framed that. Yeah, but it's funnier if we're just, if we're doing the, uh, that's the police squad thing. Yeah. The review! <laughs> I think those kids are gonna be okay. Do you ever actually light that cigarette? You ever actually light Shut that up. cigarette? I think that was a joke that someone made at the time in the comments. Because, like, <laughs> yeah. that's just a prop cigarette. You ever actually light that thing? <laughs> Eventually, oh, I got like welcome. a uh, no, no, uh, a uh, an e cig oh, uh, that I could actually like we're blow steam out. Through the Ewoks number nine comic. An Ewoks comic? Oh, just roll with it. So yeah, I okay. suppose you'd like to stick around and I don't know review a couple of things while I get caught up, would you? And yeah, yeah. this was to say, and no, Liz was going to start really doing her own thing. videos eventually. I we moved in together RPGs. in 2010, uh, later that year. I'm yeah, and she was doing uh, pen and paper out. She misspelled foundry. What did you do with the Ewoks joke? Ah, touche. Uh, so yeah, that was, that was her introduction, oh, and she became a third character, and the first shot of Lord Vice, because I don't think we had the rest of the costume ready yet. So I decided, okay, let's just do a... We'll, we'll build up Vice's appearance over time. Uh, this is like a, uh, a costume glove I got from uh, from Target. That we that, that like originally had some more colors on it, but we painted over those, made it all black and gray. I think mostly mostly thanks to the prop lady Amethyst. It so like, for, like claw thing here. What was that? Gives it a very Doctor Claw like feel fit right there. Sort of just the idea. Of, I like the idea. I, I just wanted the idea of like yo, we only see part of him, and then we end with and all that I see, I conquer. And like like end with the fist fist strike. I I like. Dramatic, uh, 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 sound and music strikes, especially for an ending thing. Yeah. So this one like we're building up, uh, uh, we're building up Vice over time to try to establish him as a uh, to establish him as a threat because it's very different from Mechakara. I wanted this to be a very different sort of villain than Mechakara, who was you know full of rage and contempt and 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 you know barely contained hostility and just like annoying him sometimes. Versus uh, uh, versus Vice, who is cold and calculating and super confident with himself because he's never really lost before. I quit. Uh. Why did you include that? 
Because <laughs> it's hilarious? I suppose. Uh, well, okay, it's because <coughs> it's because you're referencing what happened. Oh, okay. That's why. It's because you're referencing what happened. If I left it out, someone was going to complain. Okay. So, yeah, uh, the the shade head right there just is like the... Uh, like this, like the 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 the, the, fab, the the mask that you put on with a skull inside of it, which I thought created a nice effect if you could see through it. And I now my how, my uh, minor critique of Doctor Who and the Sonic Screwdriver with the revived series. But I absolutely love how you're waving that thing around like crazy. What? What are Unlike you how they doing? actually do. I have no idea. I'm just kind of waving this thing around as if I know what I'm doing. <laughs> well, I know a couple of things. When they had me on board their ship, they were mostly just scanning me. Uh -huh. Aha! I, I, I have absolutely no idea what I'm doing. I'm just waving this thing around. It's not like there's any displays <laughs> on the, uh, uh... To break part of one. It's not like there's any displays on the sonic screwdriver to, to show readings or anything. True. Although, True. whenever I'm, uh, whenever I end up cosplaying with the with the Eleventh Doctor's screwdriver, I always do what Matt Smith did. You know, wave it, wave it, wave it, open and read like that exposed green part. Hmm. So I've been so with this one uh, since since I considered Linksano to be part of the Vice arc, uh, I it was still fly by the seat of your pants, much like with Mechakara, but I was developing it over time. And I and by this point I had a pretty good idea of where the storyline was going uh, already. So hence why I started setting up uh, the shades don't have their own internal power. They are powered by uh, Vice's ship to set up what would happen in the finale. Hmm. Just how I learned they were robots. But they're not just robots, are they? Dude, More with the flying some pants. Serious hoodoo going on with these things. They're magically charged robots. I also want to They're establish that Vice has access to magic. Device. It's just you know he doesn't dimensions. necessarily use it. But it's the power signature that's interesting. Trade Federation it's rules. Totally yes. Yes. Flux. Exactly. Which means but the same. But the same principle basically applied to Vice different. as well. That his physical suit was powered by his ship as well. <sighs> However. Moss, no wonder Vice was so really tech. He basically threat. took literally his source and seat of power. Yep. To fight them. Fortunately, it looks like we have time on our side, at least. Poyo, I want every piece of shade to bring magic you down, technology. Down, Techno magic. Apart, magic tech. Do whatever magic. you have to. Figure out anything you can about them. When they come again, I want to be ready. For Did them. Vice give oh. a name to a ship before it was Comicron One? Uh, oh, that way, we, we've gone never, back and forth about never, that over the years. Uh, you know, just like show, me and GSR and a few other people. I've kind of never. taken the attitude of no, not really. Oh, like he wait, didn't really care to. Me. But like I'll other people. Uh, but I think like someone suggested the name of Prometheus. Oh yeah, and this uh, gag. <laughs> other other top of fourth wall characters. Who could Sorry, take over the who could take over return. the show for future episodes? Sorry, he's back. I love I love this collective. Aw. <laughs> the pyramid head just like girl. Um, that was me in the pyramid head outfit this time. Uh, this we've so gone back and forth. Uh, oh, the first story of magic. We've gone back and forth uh, about uh, the name of Vice's ship. I remember there's a reason why it's. Um, and you can sometimes see it in the live stream graphics, even. Uh, the ship is a Daedalus class uh, starship because that was what you That was the was. name, Daedalus. Yeah. Daedalus was the name of, of it, uh, was the name that he gave it, so. Yep. All right, so Star Trek Voyager Elite Force review. This is, uh, this was a major milestone for a few reasons, uh, because I had already finished up the, the my first Let's Play ever was Star Trek Voyager Elite Force. Uh, and the thing is, at the time, there was this p popular wisdom, so to speak, that Let's Plays, especially the ones on That Guy With The Glasses, uh, were going, you know, would end with a big skit, uh, for the conclusion of a Let's Play. And I didn't do one for mine. I think I had wanted to do one, but I never got around to it. But I was like, okay, well, there's a comic adaptation of Star Trek Voyager Elite Force. That will be where we have the skit. And we'll incorporate it into uh, the, the storyline with Vice and everything like that. Uh, I was not intending to have Ensign Monroe be a be a major thing. But That's it was going to all... But like, much like with the Mechacar finale, it would all come, come together again. So, at the Once time, again. Happy Harry... 
of Happy Harry Toons, uh, Saturday Morning Watchmen, a few other animations. He was on that guy with the glasses. Uh, we were not close, but I did talk to him a few times, and I asked, and I realized, I have no idea what I'm doing for this Vorsaw thing, so I asked him, uh, can you put together a really quick animation? Doesn't need to be anything major. It's like some kind of looping thing with this Vorsoth, just like, uh, you know, like with the tentacles moving back and forth. And he said yes. He said he could do that. He never did. He never did, got back to me. I was kind of mad at him because he never got back to me. I understand. It was like a quick favor, and animation is not that easy. But, like, nope. he never even, like, got back to me to say, yeah, sorry, man, I can't do this. So that's why... That's why we're about to have this line here, which was, as, it's the Vorsaw that it's poorly animated. Because I ended up doing the animation instead. Uncle Bennis' uh, media reviews. Who wasn't on that guy with glasses back then? Me. Me. Yeah, there were a lot of people who uh, uh, who didn't, uh, you, you know, who were on there, but, like, were only on there so briefly. Like, they just, like, uh, like Ashens was a member of that guy with the glasses for a, for, for a hot minute. I wonder, was there any plans for Future Link Carter to do a full review? Not really. All right, let's uh, All right. Re let's resume. Have to cut out a lot for the There's one other big thing, comment, if I remember correctly. Oh, no, wait, that's at the very beginning of this review. Yes, we'll get to that in a minute here. Yeah. The story's condensing leaves no room for the reader to catch their breath, and everything seems... Then we reference that line in your Elite Force 2 live stream. Yep. My recommendation? Go play the game, since it... <laughs> Mr. Poyo, report. We are receiving a distress signal. <laughs> I, I showed, love that. I showed Poyo in the, the same uniform I was wearing. Uh, I love it. Right, sir. Who is Ashens? Ashens is another reviewer. You should look him up. He reviews, quote unquote, Tat. Ensign Monroe. That's Lieutenant Monroe. Yeah, and everyone still calls him Ensign Monroe, that. even though I he, he was a lieutenant by this point because Elite Force 2 happened. By the way, uh, the I, I don't remember exactly where it is. I think you just passed it. Uh, this is where the thumbnail for the uh, Elite Force uh, live stream came from. Yeah, because they're pointing at the Lieutenant Pips. Yes. Which I digitally erased one. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Chris Duckman was on CA during uh, during its final days where, where we actually ha were all on the site. Again, and I Ashens has done his own movies too. Yes, he did uh, Ashens and the Quest for the Game Child and uh, Ashens and the Polybius Heist. A promotion. What are you doing? By the way, here? since the rest of my crew are busy, Harry, uh, 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 I went off on my but own. Lieutenant Monroe got a promotion before Harry Kim did. Yep. Yeah. I, have destroyed I don't even know who Harry Kim is, but I'm guessing he has. He was one. Of, he was one of the main I cast, and he was an ensign for seven goddamn years. How did you get here? Uh, it's never been officially canonized, but the uh, but it, there's nothing in canon that is saying that this universe. hasn't happened. Utilizing Everyone on Voyager got a two-step promotion once they got home, correct? It sounds about right. Let's get you back to your ship. Monroe yeah. is a captain. Something else is coming <laughs> in from the other dimension. What? What? My God! My God! Uh, the sauce, and it's very poorly animated. <laughs> yeah, so I just like, I took a screenshot of the Vorsaw thing very quickly tried to draw like a crude version of it. Because the Vorsaw was incorporated <laughs> into this big machine. And and as I said mentioned last time, I'm not a great artist. You know, you've seen you've all seen Lightbringer. You know how bad an artist I am. So, just so you know, just so you know, back in the days, I, let me tell you what I would have done. Because I used to do some machinima like stuff with uh with Elite Force. You know, I used to use it to build up 3D sets and such. I would have made a shader that was pure blue or pure green, probably probably pure blue, and then I would have spawned in the Forsoth NPC against it and screen captured it and just put that in. That's what I would have done back in the day. Fair enough. Forsoth, I am Captain Linkara of the Federation Starship Green Futon. I, I did not have a. Place of origin, yeah, I should, they I should be forced yes. to use deadly force upon you. Foolish insect. Uh, okay, I guess uh, was it Ab Admiral Mommy's at the beginning of this one? Uh, I think Admiral Admiral Mommy was in a different one. That was the Star Trek slash X Men crossover. Oh, okay. I just started shooting it. Oh, I'm sorry. I I thought you were done. Please go on with your little story. The Warsoth shall ravage this world. I'm just a captain without a ship. It happens. 
I'm sorry, sorry, my finger slipped. Uh, say, you and yeah, you Captain know Jack Sparrow. Vulnerable to a frequency of 0.17 gigarands or 0.16, <laughs> would you? <laughs> Green food no. time, a.k.a. come across okay, zero. Let's try both. Oh. oh. Take a phaser and blast it to hell. Setting phaser to frag. I have that exact uh, toy. By the way, you're very bad at trying to fight the Vorsoth in the actual Elite Force game with, uh, uh, with just a phaser. This would be a horrifically bad idea. I love that, though. Yeah, that's the, uh, power, that's the silver, silver riser, I think, from, uh, Power Rangers in Space. Yeah. So why yellow phaser beam and not, uh, blue? Uh, because I recalled at the time that sometimes the phaser was yellow. I've seen red, I've seen blue, seen green. Chat, did that ever happen? I feel like there was a time just like once where the where, where the phaser beam was yellow. So Zane's I weapon, remember, yes. Yeah, I, I remember very specifically blue, red, and even green from uh, from uh, 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 that, that Hyper Time episode. But I cannot for the life of me remember yellow. Yeah, maybe I maybe it was just my bad memory, but that's what I recalled. Yeah, okay. I'm only on PNG at the moment. I remember yellow uh. more than red. You get yellow phasers if you aren't well hydrated. <laughs> phasers even change colors when the modulation is constantly changing. We'll go with that. That works. Not enough of you people have watched Star Trek, and that makes me sad. Something happens here, if I remember correctly. Oh, yes, I believe something important kind of happens here. Good job, Monroe. We need to get you back to the forge so you can... What <sighs> the hell was that? Okay, before we get to that, uh, Dalek Apocalypse. Quick, let's stand still and slightly move a bit to dodge attacks. Yeah, there's not a lot of room <laughs> in my bedroom back then. So, like... Yeah. <laughs> Evade! <laughs> Jim Johnson. Move there your knees, is. bend your arm, bend your knees, move your arms. <laughs> so yeah, the, the the first appearance of the entity in the show, uh, because like I said, by this point I had figured out, my God, Sonic.exe. <laughs> by this point I had figured out uh, Vice's backstory and Vice's whole deal. So. It's time to, so much like how we did some setup for Vice in the first storyline, it's time to start setting up the entities. Time to start uh, establishing what's going on here. And thus the human. Lunar Kova, uh, Korva, speaking of newer viewers, would you ever do another Voice from the Dark style mass crossover again? And would you include newer CA inspired viewers like Crimson Rogue or Josh Scorcher? Yeah, most certainly. Uh, I like Josh Scorcher. We had an idea for a sequel to Voice from the Dark, but it, but there was a big thing that I wanted to do as part of it that didn't really th that that fell through. No one was interested in doing that part, so it just kind of fell by the wayside. But I wouldn't be against doing it again in the future. Uh, Mike VT VT VLTG three, uh, we will get your super chat in a minute. So yeah, the first ever appearance of the entity. We can probably presume it was around this time that the entity officially you know, crossed over, at least before this, because Vice had not shown up yet. Uh, so maybe we can say that like when the Vorsoth got pulled into this universe, maybe the entity came with it. And we all know that Vice was always following the entity, so it yes. makes sense for him to come through at this point. Except, except it doesn't quite make sense because Vice was already on his way, though maybe it was like a wibbly-wobbly, timey-wimey thing. Uh, will we ever get a Lord Vice full backstory? Eh, you get kind of the gist of it. There was an idea back back when uh, Channel Awesome was doing its what it was going to be its fifth anniversary crossover. Uh, not really a crossover. It was called the Uncanny Valley. It was a collection of short story, short films that everyone else on the that other people on the site were invited to participate in. Uh, they invited me to do it. Uh, and I was working on my first DVD at the time, so I had to turn them down. But uh, but my idea for it was basically going to be Lord Vice's backstory, where we like the one thing that I always remember, and I've talked about this before. This shot of like uh, Will as Lord Vice in front of the green screen, like him in human form, slow as we see like a background shots of 
the uh, the you know the entity's reign of destruction from universe to universe, we'd slowly see cybernetic components get added to Lord Vice, and you know as he as it finally ended on him taking on his traditional appearance. Orange Octopi Seven. Fun fact: I just had I had just done a deep wiki dive into Missing No right before I watched this, and immediately guessed what the entity was based on the sound alone. Really, that's impressive, because I hadn't yep. even started hinting at the missing number connection. I think, I think your first major hint is actually, well, I'm not going to say it yet because it, it's coming up. <clears throat> yeah, that's a bit no. before we actually. Oh, I'm sorry. No, I'm, I'm, no, you're right. It's in the next storyline. That's that's the big major hint that I think of. Yeah. It, it, it's Harvey. So um, Vice's human form is basically is. Will? Yep. That's the thing. People people keep keep throwing out these theories of, uh, oh, Vice is an alternate universe Linkara. Vice is red. No, no, he was going to be like some kind of like feudal lord on his planet where, and he was like you know, like kind of like Doctor Doom esque, and he and, and thus he failed to stop the entity, and things would go worse from there. Anyway, let's continue. Anyway, Monroe, it's best we get you back to the forest. And thus, we, we need to connect. And thus, we decided let's connect we'll this to Lord I've Vice. I've been looking into the Vorsoth as well. I've actually discovered who it was that created them. Oh. Did you ever get another yeah. Voyager area Never uniform? Of yes, but was it? It's not that oh. much better. I should. I should know. This is the same Voyager uniform that I had since I was a little kid, which is why it doesn't really sit fit right. Uh, because of course it's made for someone much smaller than me, and, and, and like, you know, again, from the shoulders up instead, because I don't think it, like, fit, uh, fit over my stomach anymore. Uh, the, the, the TNG uniform, that was one that I bought. It was not an official one, which is why it's missing the red piping around the collar, but it fit really well, and I use that for Kick-Assia. For advice? And then, I still can't believe you have a Season 1 TNG uniform. It rings a yeah, I, I can't remember. I, that was another eBay purchase. I think I got that just for for giggles. Your forces have done. An All right, and now we and now we have established and now we're establishing that that Mechakara is rebuilt. Really need to put me back in this. I wanted to give him a new uh, uh, plaid shirt to differentiate him, and again, only showing pieces of vice. No, it was not because he no longer had the power connection to the ship. Ah. That was supposed to be a vis again. It was supposed to be a visual indicator. Every vice since then has not had the green lights turned on because he no longer has the connection to Comicron One. Thus, he doesn't have have the limitless power of the ship. Right. Wonder how many people mistook the chest jewel for an eye the first time this aired. I don't think that many did. What was the plan of Mechagara teaming up with Vice? Just like uh, I realized that I still wanted to do another Power Rangers fight, but I knew by that point that Vice was not going to have a Power Rangers fight, even though that was the original plan for it. So I was like, okay, I still want to do something with the Power Rangers Zeo thing. I'll bring back Mechagara and have a new fight with him. Why hasn't Mechagara tried to return to his universe after the Clone Saga? Uh, because he's made of meat. He doesn't want to go back while he's made of meat. Makes sense. Hmm. Thing to see what has happened in my absence. And in return for your assistance in crushing Linkara, I will spare your universe my wrath. Agreed. But why the subterfuge? Why not an all-out attack? My hair looked terrible. My resources are limited at this moment. Better to conquer slowly, destroy him and his allies one at a time. So that when the time like it, comes, it looks good in that shot, but like you see it from the side, it's like really like bunching up up in one way. Which to alert the entity that I have found it again. Is he going to be part of more storyline stuff? No, she does not want to be part of more storyline stuff. She prefers doing uh, uh, her own thing as a you know just comedic side character. Such as just randomly and reaching down and like, nope, yep, nope, nope. That might be my favorite. Michikara. Magic. And in fact, 
And thus, Mechakara comes up with the idea of let's psychologically torture Linkara to set up the Silent Hill Dead Alive reviews. Uh, was the limited resource line to reference how Vice was more nomadic than a true emperor? Uh, sort of. The original concept for how Comicron 1 was going to look was that it was basically cobbled together. It was supposed to look kind of like a junk heap. Supposed to look like he just kept adding stuff on there. No visual aesthetics at all. It was supposed to just be like, shove stuff on there that, that is useful to fighting the entity. And it would look like, uh, and I wanted it to be like asymmetrical looking. Cacassia blew my mind at the time because it was filmed in Reno where I live. I think I saw you posting a behind the scenes where you went to the comic shop I went to at the time. Nice, yeah, we did take a trip when we had a free day uh, around the city. We went to a comic book store, and, and so, yeah, that's cool. That's where I got the uh, California Raisins 3D uh, comic. And begin the running joke of Linkara being weak to the mental stuff. Yep. Hello and welcome to Attack the Fourth Wall. Hunter's episode! I was moving out! I moved, and V and, and uh, Liz and I moved in together. Uh, I got to thinking the other day. <laughs> Evil beings seem to keep finding out where I am, and frankly, I'm tired of fighting villains or having my comics come alive and try to kill me. It's become something. All right, so so here's here's a a true story because I've moved like three times now, so it's not, it doesn't make a big difference. Uh, there was a a troll website at the time. Uh, with some behind-the-scenes people talking about how they were going, uh, how because my my address was public at the time, so like uh, 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 so like people there, there was talk. Uh, I got this letter from a fan who was warning me because this is before I also did PO unboxing, who said who said like, oh man, these people these people are talk are, are are talking about doing something to you. You should probably move and you should do a Sonic comic review because they want it because they want to see you do Sonic. You don't want to see you making fun of Sonic stuff. So, uh, and, and I was just laughing because I was already planning on moving, and I was doing the Sonic episode for the 100th episode. And, like, when I actually tracked down what the hell these people were supposedly going to be doing to me, like, you know, it's terrifying to know that, yo, know, you know, someone's going to threaten you. They were saying, like, oh, man, we should go and egg his house. Oh, no. Really? Uh. Oh, no, it's so terrible. Oh, no, it's so terrible. <laughs> so I couldn't really take any kind of threats from that kind of thing seriously. So yeah, I moved. Uh, Liz and I moved into the apartment, and now we have, and now we have the explanation of why I moved, and a reference to a reference. So we'll set, so we'll explain this for a minute. In a minute. Oh, I got a. Oh, as you know, I thought there was a memories clip, but no, it's just like, it's the 100th episode, let's throw in a bunch of clips. In this economy? Excuse me, have you seen a little girl about yay high black hair? You're going down! You magnificent bastard, I read your book! I threw a kick ass you in there because, because like, you know... Kigasi was a major event, even though I didn't, uh, even though I wasn't really threatened by anything in that, and you know, they came to my house. Uh, KRG, shut up and take my money! <laughs> oh no, I had moved on from the threatening thing. This was just, just clips and referencing big events from, from, from the past hundred episodes. Yeah, I can't think of anything specifically either. Still, good time. I like how the, I do like the writing of for the beginning of the hundredth episode. Oh yeah, this. Okay, let's do this. I left them a little surprise. <laughs> <laughs> now that Linkar's left his old place. All right, this is a reference to a ref. This is a reference to a, 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 an obscure thing. Uh, Angry Joe's birthday. Uh. uh I can't, so, like, his girlfriend at the time, I think, organized a bunch of us to all send him birthday messages that, in turn, got posted up on the, uh, uh, on, on his, uh, blip page or his, his website. And Phalus's was a green screen, and, and, and Joe had just moved into the Angry Army Orbital Station. And, uh, and so Phalus, for his, uh, uh, cameo, for, for his cameo for the birthday wishes... Uh, he did a thing where he went to Joe's old shooting location, where it was like the underground bunker or whatever, and Phelps like, Ha-ha! Now I've taken over the angry army base here! It's all mine! And then, 
the angry army base because it has its own artificial intelligence that was like on the screen at the time like intruder detected initiating self-destruct <laughs> Phelous, creator of Fat Grandma. So I was like, okay, for the 100th episode, I'm going to have Phelous try to take over my old space, except once again, self-destruct sequence initiated. I'm taking over. Self-destruct sequence activated. Self-destruct. Uh, crap, not again. The self-destruct uh, sound there. Sorry, I'm grabbing a thing here to show off. The self-destruct sound effect there comes from a video game called Descent, which I have used sound effects for over the years. And looky here, what I just have been 3D printing, this is the spaceship from the first Descent game. It's uh, Vertigo oh, I 1. I that game! I know, right? I think I'm going to sell a bunch of these at, uh, uh, at Too Many Games, which I'm going to be at. Uh, I'm going to print off a bunch of these. I need to paint them. But this thing is cool. It's a really cool little fighter craft. I haven't thought about Descent in a long time. That game was fun. Yeah, I'm thinking I might do a Descent playthrough for uh, for the streams, because I haven't played Descent in forever. Hey, that'd be cool. Anyway. Eight, seven. Wait, why don't you just move on to Comic Crown Wonder Plane to avoid all the people attacking you? Because the Comic Crown One's not comfortable. Okay. Plus, if something goes wrong in space, you don't want to be on, you know, you're in the spaceship where your oxygen can run out. Descent I mean, one or two. I mean, uh, this 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 model is from the first descent. You move on board Comicron one, one. You're effectively moving aboard a warship. So just imagine moving Listen, aboard the battleship Missouri. All right, here I... we g so here we go. The Silent Hill reviews. So. Uh, a few, few pieces of inspiration here. Uh, first of all, I knew I wanted to escalate with the second Silent Hill review. I knew that I wasn't going to make anything as funny as the first one in my mind. So I was like, okay, let's, let, let's make something serious. Let's actually, let's, let's do a proper homage to Silent Hill while also explain the backstory of the magic gun. Because the magic gun had nothing behind it. Uh... Halkira, are we, are we, do we pass missing? No, yet. Uh, technically, but like we haven't done the full entity arc yet. This is the vice arc right before it. So I wanted to explain the origin of the magic gun. Where did he purchase that? Which in this, with the answer is a Renaissance festival, in real life. And the D first DVD explains where Linkara got it. Uh, so like, okay, let's do a. Uh, let's do like a proper horror story. Let's do a more dramatic, serious. Uh, uh, a story here. Yeah, this is a mini arc, a story of ma this is another mini arc, a story of magic. Again, not a name that I came up with. This was like this was a fan name for this mini arc. Uh, but I and I would tie it together with Vice and the Mecha Car thing. Have you ever had aspirations to be a horror writer? More recently, I have, but like nothing too serious. I can do my own thing independently. I don't need to like have a novel published or anything. Though I have ideas. Uh, was Magic Gun always thought it was being a person in there? Or was that invented closer towards this mini arc being conceived? It was close. It was, it was conceived more closer to this arc. TerraVenture is not exactly a good example of a safe spaceship to live on. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, it's kind of destroyed <laughs> at the end. Uh, all the Magic Gun slash Flintlock percussion cap pistols, or could someone have put the soul of a tortured child into, into an, an AK? Yeah, they could have. It's just... They're old. The, the order is old fashioned. What was the inspiration for the absent grimoire? Just any kind of like weird magic dark books, like like the Necronomicon and stuff like that. All right, right, so this is where you got the absent grimoire. Yes, this is where the absent grimoire showed up. Yeah. Uh, so the direct inspiration for these little mini segments that 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 slowly explained uh, Margaret later Mark's backstory. Is that uh, uh, is from a Doctor Who audio drama again, specifically Scherzo, my favorite Doctor Who audio drama, uh, where in the beginning of it, uh, the Eighth Doctor narrates this story about a king who decided to banish music from his kingdom, and music as a living force was banished, but uh, but like society as a whole was. Uh, uh, was harmed by this. There was no like magic. There was no music in anything, so everything felt joyless and and terrible and and emotionless. So he finally bid music to return, but music in its exile learned 
cruelty and evil and destroyed everything. Hmm. And even the music here uh, that's in the background is from the big Finnish audio dramas. Unfortunately, not the same music as Scared, so I probably would have used it, used that music. This is from a different audio drama, which you can still find online. Uh, it's never been claimed before, which is why I felt confident uh, using it again when we explained Mirror Margaret's backstory. Ah, okay. Wait, music is alive? It's a fairy tale. So, let's get uh, started here with this backstory. <clears throat> A, a quiet little town, and Silent Hill. Her mother and father just as this was done uh, uh, by Dr. Crafty's uh, uh, girlfriend, uh, who goes by, I can't remember what her name, she went by Rin at the time, I think, uh, uh, I can't remember what she goes by nowadays, people who are fans of Dr. Crafty can probably mention, uh, can probably say it, because they're both VTubers now, I believe. They worshipped a great and powerful god. Loud and loud, they loved their god more. I know that god. you uh, reuse some of those uh, illustrations, but were yes, some of them modified or different? To do with I the modified the, the second Margaret. one for Mirror Margaret to give her give her a smile, and oh, I asked yeah. permission to do that. Never go off on one Throughout the Silent Hill review, uh, the other characters oh, were showing up, ever. and I, and again, I wanted to set uh, up. Is Crabby still voicing Poyo? Yes. Yes, Crafty is still voicing Poyo. I could, but what would be the point? It's just getting old now. Who named... Uh, Neurocleus, wait, did I miss something? I didn't remember the magic gun having the name Mark. That was my birth name. Last, the last Halloween episodes. Uh, yep. for The Ring, Volumes 3, 4, and, uh, the Spider-Man episode. The, the, the Clone Saga episode at the time. That, uh, Mark is trans, so... Yeah, that's uh, their name Mark now. So, I would recommend watching those episodes. Fun stuff happens there. <laughs> That's an understatement. I still need to remaster bear. those, by the way. Hmm. Oh, hi, doggy. <laughs> the giggling. The hell? And can you believe Fun fact, I actually clipped that uh, giggling well, and used it for something that I did once. Benjamin Hall, could the magic gun stop science like Genesis? I heard screaming. That quick moves it went. Okay? Uh, I don't know if it could. What if people would stop interrupting That was actually me? a really good quick move. I know, right? Mm -hmm. hey, so again, we're we're doing psycholog we're doing psychological we torture of Linkara because we're because again we're gonna try to do a serious horror thing. Or Mechakara or Mechakara is trying to convince Linkara to commit suicide. I believe there's another reviewer who reviewed all the uh, all the, the uh, became... storylines. I think they, they actually did a top 20. She referred to this as the mental crap. Yep. 13 years old. Her parents Andrew J. Brown Comics is probably my favorite of the mini arcs. This or when you're all trapped with the thing. Mm. To their God or simply live peaceful lives. Yeah, so this this God. image uh, that Rin made, I modified it. I did in the uh, in, with the mirror Margaret to have, a, have a, like, like a little smile instead. Mm. At least, not until the unbelievers... I asked permission heard. because, you know, I was modifying so her art. I didn't want to do it with a, if she was okay with it. That her entire purpose in life was to be drained of her essence. So that they could I knew once, you, once I saw the first illustration, I'm like, ooh, you're going to reuse them all, but are they going to... To cleanse different? the world yeah. of those that did not believe to usher in their paradise. And they tormented their daughter that loved them, brought about pain and suffering to her, so that she had no strength left save for her will and her mind. Violin Carl let Crafty go when he still owed 400 evil. title cards. Even when the daughter <laughs> wept and sobbed from what they did to her, they said the same thing over and over. Feel the love of God. This is also during Feel a time when I kept having dead glory. child May backstory the love of stuff. God guide you. Finally. I don't do that as oh, often anymore. The liquid essence of her Back will, in the day. So the ritual for the weapon could be completed. Uh, where'd you get the laughing audio? I can't remember. I think it was just like a, a stock audio clip of, of, of baby giggling. insane. Talking to people that are This is really Mechakara doing this to him in this shot. But of course, by this point, he thinks he's seeing things, so he doesn't think he's actually there. At some point, it's never really explained outright, but somehow Mechakara... I found out the backstory of the magic gun and contacted the spirit within, who at the time was full of vengeance and rage and and whatnot. The, we gave I gave it the uh, the the unofficial name Delorum, which was like uh, uh, like Latin for despair or something like that. I can't remember what what, what it came from. That's the real Mechakara, Yes. 
Because again, Mechakara is trying to uh, think that the best way to, to defeat Linkara is through psychological torture. Shut up! Kill him, just like you killed her. And of course, as people pointed out, from a timeline perspective, it makes no sense for Linkara to have like a 10-year-old daughter or anything like that. But of course, when your mind is being played with, you don't think about these things. So I admit, I was always confused as to what the Delorum is versus what the spirit of the gun is. What what Margaret now Mark so, is, you know? It's kind of a. Anyway, it, it, Silent it's very Hill. much similar, and it's it's again, it's drawing upon Silent Hill, where there are basically two of the same person exi coexisting simultaneously. Like like the emo the the, emo the, the, the psychic power uh, was so was so strong, it kind of split the per the, like the tragic event split them into two people uh, who are basically equal and yet opposite. All of their rage, all of their hatred, all of their. Uh, all of their negative emotions. The other is their innocence, their sweetness, their their good feelings, and you and and you need to either eliminate one or bring them back together to try to be you know, a more complete complete whole. Benjamin so Hall, no dead mean, children now that you kick puppies. So does that mean the gun was technically out of control before this happened? Yes. Oh, okay. Yeah, Mar uh, Mark didn't, you know, didn't have uh, and Linkara because they weren't working together because they hadn't really fully embraced uh, embrace each other and become true partners. The full power and potential of the gun wasn't realized. Okay. Dead alive, dude. What does magic have to do with anything? <laughs> the hell is that? Oh yeah, I should give a warning. Flashing lights warning for some of this. I I I think it should be fine. Okay, what the hell? Okay. Okay, so this one was was me taking the psychological and taking a joke, but this would have lasting consequences. I'm gonna let this play out and then explain. Also, uh, green screen or green screen? Okay, this is. You're not really there. I know you're not really there. Of course not. Why would I be in the same room with a murderous piece of shit like you? Bad credit card. Okay, that was just immature. I'll Bad credit card, I'll tell you! I'll tell you <laughs> Doug Walker jump scare. All right. <laughs> <laughs> so here's the thing. The bad credit card was not a recurring gag. Until this moment! Oh my god, you started it! It was just a bit in the original Batman and Robin review. So, you didn't start the moment, but you started the meme. Yes. Okay, actually, you know what? Come to think of it, it actually wasn't this. It was the Superman 4 crossover, but I kept bringing it back. Because because I was like, this is how you torture, duh, uh, how you torture the nostalgia critic. You reference... The back credit card, and I and thus I and thus I made a recurring gag. People would bring it up to him, and he was fine with it. He's you know, you know of course it's a funny thing. People get <laughs> like you know so excited to see him do the over the top reaction. Oh, Vincent, said it was you. You did this. Yep, it's all my fault. And thus, and thus, no. when we came to the Batman, uh, the Batman, uh, Batman and Robin review, I was like, "Okay, I'm officially going to end it. I'm going to kill the joke by 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 having them like, yo, okay, just say it, just say it, just do it." And it's like, by this point, it was like almost ten years later. The joke wasn't yo yo referencing it. It wasn't really that funny anymore, and it was kind of a point of contention for people making fun, yo, yo making fun of, of all this stuff. So I was like. The bad credit card makes perfect sense. There's no reason to go over the top about it. Yeah. So, yeah. You not only started it, you and killed I, it. I killed it. <laughs> Tune in next week for the finale. <laughs> Is it the same image every time? Uh, yes. You thought it was the internet which made the back credit card meme, but it was me, Linkara! It's Silent Hill! <laughs> What's up, it? JoJo's reference! <laughs> you brought it into this world and you took it out. Oh, hold on. Oh, no, is it this time? Yes! Oh, no, you don't! Oh, 
Oh, oh yeah, my favorite gag. Oh, I love this gag. <laughs> the pocket fan. <laughs> <coughs> it pays to be prepared. It was then. I like, the I like little gags like that for these kind of, for, for those kind of like simple solutions to these problems. Okay, so there was the goal. fan, and then and there was the larger fan, and, and then the one that I did. Remember that one? Yep. All right, so uh, so as you notice, Rin is not drawing this card. Uh, I think uh, she either got sick or she she misinterpreted what I needed. Uh, so she re so it was decided like le so she couldn't get me a third card in time. Marobot, who was doing the Nostalgia Critics title cards that time and had created uh, and was creating Comic Con one for me, I very quickly commissioned him to do uh, the third piece of artwork and the title card for the episode. Uh, so, so in this case, so yeah, uh, yeah, so he did this final shot of the, the zoom out with Margaret's face and the blood coming from the eyes. But she did as her parents had wanted. Lost everything that she was so that they could have their weapon and kill for their god. The daughter poured all of her rage, all of her hate, all of everything that was mad that her love had held This was reused last Halloween. Weapon. Yes, it was. Every unchecked drop of emotion was placed into the instrument. It seemed as if she had put her very soul into it. And yeah, Marobot was a great artist. That we, weapon, I still don't know what the hell happened to her. Righteous cause. The weapon burned. Did Marobot burned vanish for a time? Yeah, I think he's still gone. Their souls. It plunged their psyches into nightmares too horrible for them to comprehend, giving reprieve only so it could be snatched up. And this is just where I came in. Continue. But before the parents received their final suffering, they asked the weapon why. Why would it do this to them? They loved their god and had even sacrificed the life of their own daughter for it. And the weapon replied, Because you were my god, and all I have done is follow your teachings of love. Mother is the name for God and in the lips and, and, and the hearts and minds thoughts, of all children. The parents descended into madness and death. The crow. <laughs> the weapon laughed ah, in okay. loving devotion. Da -da -da. And there's that very time. Silent part. Hill music. Yeah, Mirabai can do the creepy Whoa, stuff. We can also do uh, uh, yo, yo, funny title cards like that. Oh, yeah, more of the fog coming in again. Okay, and it's it's funny enough doing that, but yeah, my personal favorite is this next one. Weeks, yep. What with me seeing things that aren't Where you there. don't even look. And that. This one. <laughs> is that a nuclear siren? No, it's just uh, the Silent Hill siren music. Siren sound, really I should say. Me off. I've had to endure something far worse than all of this junk. Silent Hill dead alive. So now all that's left is to see how the real main character, the dog that Ken brought with him, will overcome these obstacles of idiots put before him. Let's dig into Slice of Ham number... Oh, here we go. Yes, can I help you? You have no honor. Oh. The unofficial hey. voice, even though it's not oh, a really the voice. Not gonna yep. kill Christabella, then stop teasing us with it, comic. Yeah, you'd know all about killing little girls. Experimenting with lighting. I'm not talking to you. Silent Hill deserved better than this. I am instructing all of my fans to go out and read Silent Hill Sinner's Reward. Silent Hill Sinner's Reward is actually legitimately a good comic. It's not it's not great, but it's a much more enjoyable Silent Hill story than the rest of this. Uh, see, now this is my favorite. The fog guy doesn't come in, we just switch to the other world. <laughs> Lunar Corv, I've noticed that your tone seems a lot more positive when mentioning the critics. Does that mean things are cool between you and Doug Walker? Am I positive for bringing up bad stuff? It's fine to bring it up. No, uh, no, things are not cool between us. It's just I'm trying to leave out, you know, a lot of negative emotions and a lot of, you know, we're not going to relitigate everything that went down. So this is just me talking about my recollections and things that happened at the time. So, of course, I'm going to talk about the positive stuff. This is, you know, these people, you know, you know Channel Awesome, I was positive about being on it. I loved being on it. I was friends with the guy for 10 years. It's why, you know, it hurt so much when all when everything happened. So, of course, I'm going to talk about, you know, when stuff was positive and when things were good. App. And I also decided to do, okay, let's, let's throw in some more Silent Hill stuff that I didn't do in the first parody. 
It's like, okay, there's a bag that's blocking your path. <laughs> yes. Is that the audio breaking up on my side or what? Yeah, it's breaking up for me too. Really? Uh, chat, is it breaking up for you guys as well? Well, the sound, the music is kind of like a droning. Like, yeah. Yeah, sound, yo, know, adventure game logic for some of these puzzles. Okay, it's just a squirt screwing around with us. Yeah. Yeah. What is going on? Why do I keep seeing these things? Yeah, Discord's screwing it up for us. Well, I'm sorry, let me, uh, here, I'm gonna pause the video for a second. And I will, uh, uh, it says a pre a pause for you to save your resources. Uh, you know, you resume it, see if that helps. It's his own damn fault, murdering bastard. I have had enough of this, would you people just... Nope. Nah. I did what I had. I talked about I'm gonna end the stream on your end and then continue it on here. Whatever you... Uh, stop streaming. Share screen again. Uh, William Wright, I first learned about Schrodinger's cat because of you. I'm so sorry. <laughs> Sky Slasher, so you'll explain where the gun came, uh, came from, but not where he bought it? Oh, well, he didn't buy it. It's explained in the first, uh, DVD. Lord, whatever is doing this, I deny you. There he goes. Liz was a trooper oh. for for doing for putting on the spirit Halloween nurse's outfit and slathering fake blood on her. So, okay. and by that point, I had actual bandages I could wrap around her. Okay, so that's the nurse character. There's seriously. I don't remember which a one's Delorum. Nurse? Come on. Uh, Delorum is the one that's all wrapped up in bandages. We'll see her in a minute. Ah. Ah. Now we gotta start putting the pieces together of this. Dark backstory and 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 oh, it's totally uh uh yo Linkara. It's totally Linkara had a kid that he murdered. Sick freak. And there it is, the absent grimoire. Absent grimoire missing. Do you get it? Do you get it? <laughs> None of demon nurses in your show totally went downhill after that. Those who are dead are not dead. Uh, yeah, just uh, just so everyone knows, the very first no, I'm sorry, not first, second time, second time I went to go visit uh, Lewis up there in in Minneapolis. One of the first things I did was grab the absent grimoire and find every last page I'd ever seen on the show on it. All right, let's I am that. I'm that much of a fanboy. Benjamin Hall, Linkara is Schrodinger's killer. And you know what? Let's talk about this. The absent grimoire, uh, the actual prop, uh, was constructed from a sketchbook that I got from Barnes & Noble. Uh, there are tutorials online on how you make a real book look like an aged artificial book. So in this case, I took the sketchbook. Uh, I dipped its page. I, I took a big uh, uh, pan, made, put tea in it. Uh, just like, you know, made tea inside of it, and then I dipped the entire book inside of it, which stained the pages, and I slowly had to, uh, uh, flip them as, as, you know, as I went along, and I baked it in an oven to try, and it, and it created the crisp pages. Mind you, this also ruined the binding on the, uh, on the cover of the book, so I had to hot glue that all back in. And therefore it looks even worse, and therefore it looks even more aged. Hmm. Indeed, it makes it, it it makes the whole thing work pretty well, but the book does yeah. not stay closed because it is not it is basically falling apart. But you know, except for the fact that you have know, the hot glue keeping it in. So uh, the text that I'm reading here is a quote from a song. Uh, Those who are dead are not dead; they're just living in my head. I can't remember the exact name of it. I'm sure someone will reference it and figure out what it is a second ago. But I always loved that. I loved that 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 song, and I thought it worked. Really well as a reference to what was going on with Linkara. Will the Aston Grimoire return? Yeah, probably. Isn't that um, 42 by Coldplay? That's it, yeah. <laughs> I couldn't remember because I haven't listened to that song in forever, but yeah, it was, a, it was a 42 by Coldplay. <laughs> Lewis, why are you <laughs> cooking a book in the oven? Because I've lost all control of my life. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> also, happy birthday, Pinky and Joy. It is your 13th birthday. You weren't alive when Atop the Fourth Wall premiered. I'm old! You Hold on, you're, you're 13 today, and this happened when you were... Born. Essentially. Uh, two or three, yeah. Uh, Question, why not I, use I, the Necronomicon? Because I wanted my own book. Oh. And besides, Miss a, uh, the entity is not a traditional demon. Old is the new young. No, I'm pretty sure old will always be old. And I will not been at the oldest one here. That doesn't make me feel like... And here we go, the missing number poem. The entity poem. The coast where the lost beast came to bring the world misery and shame. A piece, a piece of, of the world, world is missing. I think I've asked you this before. Uh, I just can't remember what it was. Get to heaven. Uh, but the poem, where did it come Where did the poem come from? I made up the poem. And it just works so beautifully well because it all references the It's all it's community. all supposed to be hinting. It's supposed to be hinting to the audience that the entity is missing number. Uh, and, and uh, but, but but of course I over dramatized it. Uh, uh, beneath the seas, beside the flame, it's Cinnabar Island. Yep. Mm -hmm. uh, off the coast where the lost beast came, you encounter missing number by by swimming along the coastline. Yep. Mm -hmm. uh, to bring the world misery and shame, a piece of the world is missing. Uh, the missing is obviously the direct reference to it. To bring the world misery and shame, it's like because missing number or Leo. Or the, the equivalent Poke Gods can screw up your game. Right. Uh, and then the other you know, passages all uh, are, are the references to it. The path you should have never crossed, you should have never done this. Uh, the number of the beast is lost. It's reference to the fact that missing number is technically number zero in the Pokedex. Mm -hmm. uh, et cetera, et cetera. You get the idea. Close. Can you get to heaven? Not even close. I didn't get to heaven. It hurts every time I don't go to heaven. I think I came with that one. It hurts every time I don't go to heaven. They didn't love me. I would love to read the absent grimoire. Well, there's a... Yeah, the thing, the, 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 there's a lot of empty pages in it, because I only fill it in when I actually need something to put in. I'm not going to lie, I was a little disappointed about that. Uh, <laughs> there's still plenty I of stuff that, there's plenty of, of, of shots that I haven't, that I did use that I haven't, that haven't been in the show before, but like, you know, I want to leave it e empty because of course future storylines might use the absent grimoire. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Wow, the poem was a big reference to Cinnabar Island and how do you do the cheat code? Genius, pure genius. Yeah, because again, I was, I was, I wanted to start setting up uh, uh, you'll get the fans start talking and start trying to figure out, okay, what is this? What is the entity? Uh, and, and, and I think that, uh, that the fact that it's missing number is kind of overshadowed it a bit, a bit too much in later stuff, which is why I just tend to refer to it as the entity. But I think it worked really well, especially since I'm not, you know, I'm not subtle about the inspiration for it. Uh, I've ever considered publishing an official absent grimoire. That would require a lot of writing and extra stuff. Plus, books are actually really hard to self-publish in bulk to sell to people. Yeah. It would not be cost-effective. Not to mention, you'd have to do a lot more baking. Even the story reason for the pages being blank and then filling up is that there's magic lingering in the book. Yes. Uh, you know, art oh, from that's right. Art from adversity. Ah, I forgot about that. <laughs> you are subtle, like a hammer. My God, I thought that I was the, the, the super atop the fourth wall fanboy. <laughs> Again, removing the... And I work for the That's the lorem. That, that's the lorem, okay. I'm trying to mute some of this stuff because some of this is Silent Hill music that I, want, that I don't want to get the video claim for. And Linkara putting together the pieces of, oh my God, I'm, yo, I, I am your father and I did and this terrible thing. Uh, when in reality... The Delorum just does this to anyone who, who possesses the gun. It drives them insane because she's so full of rage over what happened to her. I'm so sorry. The car looks into the book one day and there's just somebody's grocery list. <laughs> Who's Margaret? That's Liz playing her again. Or at least playing Delorum. Uh, the voice of Margaret we're actually going to hear in a minute is played by Chrissy Diggs. 
Uh, again, that chick with the goggles, who hadn't even made like a fourth video by that point, but I was still friends with her, so I asked her to just to just record uh, the voice for this. Any special request? I don't remember her voice being that high pitch. Yeah. It was like 15 years ago. 14, 13. So there's no way of reasoning with the Dolorum. No, the Dolorum is just is basically just just like a rage demon. The only reason that that she had was she made a deal with Mechakara to do this to, and to continue on 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 what she was doing. Uh, it's like it's almost like Mechakara didn't even have to to make the deal because it's like you know like you said Dolorum will 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 drive anyone it comes into contact to yep. insane. I think more Doctor Who music. I think Valet, a, 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 this is like Valet Ditch him. Uh, I think this did this in front of a blank wall, and I was I, I made myself look tired. And then, okay, badass. Well, that was thoroughly irritating. Unfortunately, I'm gonna have to. I, I think we I think we modified the music for this just to avoid uh, content ID. But but was originally playing during this. Uh, was well, no, you know, music from the good, the bad, and the ugly. Uh, Ecstasy of Gold is what it's called. Any more Okone music is good. And there's a, and I found a great uh, remix of it by I think Metallica. There's like hard guitars. Uh, Did Linkar really Bob, die at this Bob part? Bob no. Nah, but yeah, when, yeah, when he pulled the trigger, basically Margaret prevented him from, from getting killed. Because Margaret so actually does see him as a partner, and thus we've got to remove the Dolorum and I end am the, the curse. I am the man what is the Silent Hill? Silent Hill is a video game series, uh, a, a horror game series, which is what this is all referencing. Which hasn't had a new game in a long ass time. And now we're getting like four of them and a web series for called Silent Hill Ascension. It's a weird thing. Yeah, it's so weird that like there's been one that Silent Hill for a long ass time, and now all of a sudden a whole bunch of it. And then I had I had to learn how to flip the gun, how to do a gun twirl like that because I wanted yeah. that to be the moment. The first time I do the it's, twirl, in fact. It's not easy. I, I have that gun, and it's not easy. Justice for PT. Whatever you are, you're not that little girl. Yeah, I gotta keep. Sorry, I gotta keep vod muting. Yeah. The, I gotta keep muting this because because the because uh, the especially Metallica music, which is yeah, I don't think this was the Metallica version, but still. Uh, Except. Now we switch back over to Silent Hill music. Because you are Is the speech foreshadowing for Guns and Sorcery? I hadn't come up girl, with Guns, guns and Sorcery yet. Rage and hate are all dead. You killed them already. We haven't had new That's Silent Hill because Konami are idiots and don't know how to out of business. That yep. Girl, she <laughs> her soul well, because Konami is Konami and, and Konami is the worst. She and that's actually why like, they changed recently because they actually had a recent change of performance. Well, not change of leadership, and, no and the new leadership hate. really wants to get back in the game. There's no need for you, is there? Yeah, I'm not. Yeah, Densetsu Gojira, and I'm not looking forward to the Silent Hill 2 remake either because of Blooper Team. So we will see. I think we're partners. I'm sorry, I really am, but you need to go away now. All right, so now we bring the bring the nurse back, and by this point, I had the prop lady build a new pyramid head. Oh, that is just cheating! And the, uh, and... Well, fine then. I've been wanting to try this anyway. So... And I had a, and I had a Saba toy, so I wanted to use that. It's like, you know, we're evolving. We had the power, we had the Green Ranger dagger, now it's Saba. And we didn't have the legacy Saba yet, so we just had the old okay. one. And you know what? You Referent, Rio, you know, talk about the Saba thing for a second here. Uh, so back in the day, I was my, my parents let me let me get one toy from the Toys R Us, and the cho and, and and the choice that we narrowed it down to with, with my brother and I was either uh, the Red Dragon Zord or Saba. Saba had not premiered on Power Rangers yet, 
but I was but I was much more enamored with this cool sword toy than the red dragon and Zord. And he's always and he always gave me crap about that. But like I was so much happier with Saba. <laughs> And now we got the uh, upgraded Pyramid Head because I had because I wanted a new Pyramid Head design to actually look more like uh, Pyramid Head and not as janky. So Prop Lady made this, and this one is the one that looks more like uh, uh, the movie version. And it has a proper closure on the back too. Yep. It's like a spirit Halloween robe. I'm playing Pyramid Head here. And now I just use Pyramid Head like a Pokemon. Uh, and then there was one. And now Star Trek music, because why the hell not? <laughs> uh, this scream, I think, was a stock scream that I changed the pitch of. And hey, when we restored to normal, the, the camera's no longer tilted. Yep. That's the end of <laughs> Second entity reference. I will so never forget the trailer for the Halloween arc of uh, the year of the entity. Just how very easy, just how simply it was, you know, title card, title card, title card, followed by, is there anybody out there, out there, out there? I know, turned out so great. I still, I uh, actually, no, I don't have that server anymore. I was going to, I was going to reference, I still have that server. No, we finally got, we finally switched that out. Mm. New man! <laughs> <laughs> New man. No, it's human. He's saying human. Yeah. What is the 2006 movie called Silent Hill? It was a movie adaptation of Silent Hill. It, it is great visuals, but the actual story is garbage because they deviate from, from the original Silent Hill game. Pokeball Pyramid Head is also one of my favorite gags. Momo Q. <laughs> I always hear Newman. Uh, Benjamin Hall, human. Keep reading all the times we hear the entity early on, and it freaks me out every time. Good, good. I'm really, gl I'm really so happy with how that turned out and how I was able to put that together. That was the idea. So yeah, this was the, uh, this was the, the sil the, the a story of magic mini arc. All I know, all I hope, is that whoever she was. And yeah, it was very emotionally yeah. draining. This oh, also yeah, led. Okay, so there's an, so so those of you who are relatively new around here, uh, the history of Power Rangers Wild Force originally had had a different introduction to it. The original version of the video back when it premiered in 2010 that people still occasionally bring up to mock me and and and, and troll me, uh, where I complained about of uh, people constantly demanding where is the next when is the next history of Power Rangers. I don't mind that question anymore. I've got it on T-shirts for God's sakes. Uh, but, but one, but I, but that intro also, I mentioned this storyline cause this was emotionally draining because I'm trying to act and, you know, be sad and dark and dramatic and stuff like that. And, and it was, and it was pissing me off that people weren't giving me some space to try to like get through this stuff before I resumed Power Rangers. Uh, so yeah, this was a thing that was referenced in that and people did not, uh, did not take kindly to my complaining about it. It's why we excised it since then. Because there's no reason to have it in there anymore. Benjamin, Benjamin Hall, Hall, would you like to play a game? <laughs> All right, so let's uh, let's continue. Four, right? So what's the deal with the book? Not a clue. I thought it was just another part of the other world, but it was still around after it had faded away. Much like the chain gun, the chance. the absent grimoire just stuck uh, stuck around, around without any real explanation of where it came from, <sighs> other than Mechacar, I suppose, finding it and I putting had it in there. Examine the area after. He detected an energy trace still lingering around. Something we've seen before. And there was something else. And the shade dagger that we saw earlier. That's a shade dagger. Basically implying means, yeah, Vice has yeah. been Vice's forces have been Vice. here. We this is all connected to it. Did someone make a full <laughs> parody of that HBO PR I drew? Yes! Mega 64! Mega 64 did a parody of that introduction. I don't even know if they were familiar with History of Power Rangers mm. it, or just someone shared it with them, but that was the that is the source of Volt Vengers. 
and and the first Volt Vengers video, which was them just us be, uh, being like like listing off increasingly all the things that were happening that were preventing them from working on history of Volt Vengers. <laughs> Mega 64, are they still around? I think they are. Don't quote me on that. Uh, Joseph Allen, how do you feel about Jessica Cruz? I like her just fine. I haven't read anything with her in a while. But remember, we're, we're trying to keep Super Chats to uh, uh, storyline-related questions here. Volt Vengers is hilarious. All right, and now we got to start tying things together. Because, like, okay, full reveal of Vice. Yo, this is a big episode. This is where you finally do it. And welcome aboard Comicron 1. The future Comicron 1. I'm sorry. Yep. Marobot also created all these interiors for the ship. How could this have happened? You underestimated him once again. The shot in a blue screen because of all the green on uh, uh, on his outfit. You probably would have done a better job of blue screening it than I did. Uh, I'm not going to say it. Uh, yeah, I am. Oh, God, yes. <laughs> <laughs> ah, the blurry green screen days. Yeah, so so here's the deal, especially with Vice's outfit. Uh, my camera uses it auto. My camera at the top. Well, it's still the same camera. The camera auto focuses uh, using human faces to detect for stuff. Uh, but in this case, uh, because Vice doesn't have a human face, the the focus would keep going blurry. So once I had gotten the focus on there, I turned off auto focus and switched to manual focus. So things turned out a little blurry here and in other shots because I forgot to turn autofocus back on again. Now, and, I admit I am a little sad since you have switched cameras since then. No, uh, it's the same camera. The, I've been using the, the same camera since 2010. So why does it not go blurry after you leave the set? Oh, that's why, because you have the shelves behind you. Because I have the shelves behind me now and the autofocus does it, uh, you know, is easier with the shelves than it is a blank wall. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Sorry about that. Yep. And and and, and yeah, the Vice outfit. Uh, it's a motorcycle helmet. The uh, green visor is like a football helmet insert. Uh, and the prop lady, uh, to re uh, the amethyst, made all the bells and whistles for it. Those tubes, I think, were uh, on Vice outfit were supposed to connect back in on itself or like connect to gloves, but that never really happened because the tubes were kind of just stiff. So they just kind of sit off of his outfit. We can assume they, like, you know, are, like, some cooling system or whatever. What is the Silent Hill Ascension released in 2023? Silent Hill Ascension is a web series they're releasing, which they're doing a very poor job of explaining what the hell it is. It's supposedly an interactive web series that, like, people can, like, vote on things to happen, and, and it will be canon. It will be the only way to do it. So... It's not necessarily a bad idea, but they're doing a really piss poor job of marketing it. Marketing it. Yeah. Why does the show, does the show look, look different now? Uh, because I render things differently. Uh, I I'm better at adjusting settings. There's just like a I'm just better technically at what I do. Well, you also got me too. Yeah, this was around the time I got the uh, the new the new quote unquote camera, the one I've been using since 2010. I need a new camera. But yeah, I wanted the I wanted to finally, but I wanted this to be. It was such a big episode. I wanted a big a big reveal of Vice. But then let's add on another twist, yo, to make sure that the Linksano stuff was not just a, yo, just a filler thing. We're bringing you back, Linksano. With those damned goggles, which those, I so hard of a time keying. The goggles create uh, you'll reflect so much green on them. I had to rotoscope those goggles every single time. And Linksano became a great way for me to incorporate... Uh, uh, well, a great way for me to incorporate the... Uh, uh, whatchamacallit, a, 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 an ending. You would start setting up how we were going to uh, finish off Vice. Oh yeah, and the, we're setting up the Xeonizer again. We're like doing modifications to it. Because of course it doesn't oh. work without like a, a universal uh, morphing grid to connect uh, to, just or I'm sorry, it doesn't oh, have the Zeo crystal, so we need a power source for it. And welcome once again to Secret Origins Month. I think it was during the first Secret Origins Month, and then Cry for Justice, where we actually see. Damn it, Montezuma! 
All right, so so I had already decided, you know, we were already part of the shared universe with Channel Awesome people, and Angry Joe w was on CA at the time. So let's have Ang let's have Angry Joe be be the one who says it because this is a global event. Let's have other creators involved in this. Let's have Av Joe, uh, uh, with his orbital space station, be involved in the finale. And he's referencing, I think, Civilization Five or Six here. Civilization bullshit. Yeah. <sighs> Actually really hey, Joe, good there's some sort of portal hmm. opening up over Earth. Put it on screen. Yes, sir. Oh my god. Civ 5, Civ 6 will it out at the Dear time. Yep. Lord, I can't wait to get this over with. Why do you have a space in with ever explain week? or is a joke that never explained? It's never oh, explained. Uh, hang on a second. Yes, Angry Joe. Uh yeah, Linkara. What is the status of this shared universe? It still kind of exists. Call right? Pete, who's that? Yeah, why? Uh, it oh, still no kind reason. of exists. We just don't really do much with it anymore. Say, um, like, for example, I referenced Scott the Waz right? uh, and, and, the, and uh, Borderline Forever. Like I mentioned this. quitting reviews a few times. Captain Adventure 1993, someday a top fourth wall will be in 4K HD resolution. Probably not. Also, I just have this now. I just have a view screen up there. You know, it's actually kind of funny. We've gone from you just having a view screen uh, out of nowhere to having this on monitors, to having this on screens, to once again, you just have view screens everywhere. And the first proper appearance of Comicron 1, which Marobot made the one shot of, and then we never, and then, and then shortly afterwards he disappeared, so I couldn't get more shots of it. The future Comicron 1. It is not Comicron 1 yet. Yep. Poyo, reports. The ship remains in orbit. Communication. I thought you had a second shot from behind. Have been made, but there uh, has been nope. no response. I think he gave me some he gave me some renders of the ship that we use for other shots. And we once again return of the DS tricorder. Watch the footage slow down. Ah, now that is Yeah, Voice of the Dark was the last the major use of the shared vanishing. universe. They're being destroyed just very quickly. So it became Are stock footage like 1960 Star Trek. Exactly. You never saw it from the outside. I think the big B on the front of it is a good indicator. And that was, that was a lot. That was referencing the fact that people kept asking, how do you know that's Vice's ship? How did Lincar know what the outside would look like? There's a big V on it. What else would I, I think? <laughs> Days or weeks could pass and it would only be minutes on that ship. And people still don't get the temporal, uh, the temporal dilution idea, the temporal field that, that like, on board the ship, time moves. Uh, time moves more uh, 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 differently. So the way it works is inside the field, you know, time moves more slowly. The way it works is that, like, once it enters the field, you basically you have time. Yo, know, yo, know, it slows down so that they can do whatever the hell they want to it. So, like, if you fire a missile at it, once it enters the field, from the outside perspective, it looks like it's stopped. In reality, it's just moving really, really slowly. So they can just like yo know, blast it without it being an issue. Uh, Kate Cast reviews. Yes, I did uh, do the extra animations to Comicron One uh, for the Ghost of the Machine compilation. Yep. It was. It's been my intention to to always update the animations whenever possible. Um, I just didn't get the permission to do it for this uh, one. In fact, I think Ghost of the Machine is the, the first time I did that. Hmm. It's like the finale of Stargate SG One. Exactly. Although I hadn't yeah. seen Stargate SG-1 at that point. Hyperbolic you time no shift. You have no idea how much you've borrowed from a Stargate, do you? <laughs> Which means that the Tricorder DS scans crap and plays Sonic Rush. Weapons. Exactly! Launch a missile at the thing, and until it actually penetrates the shield, which it can't... Will the story there, continue? You haven't touched it since the voice like from the dark ended. Forever. I mean, if you mean, like, the storyline, we're still doing kind of some champions. Calculate its position and end it before it becomes a threat. For the moment, there is nothing we can do but wait. Oh, good I'll point. Oh, wait, no, wait. I'm not sure the finale of SG1 had happened yet, either. Will all turn out. I want to say it had, because it was only 10 seasons. Yeah, it turned, what, 1998? Looks like he's finally this making is, his Yeah, movie. something like that. No, uh, this is... What year is this? 08? Hello and welcome to uh, 2011. 11? Oh god, yeah, SG1 had ended by then. Yep. Oh yeah, it ended, I think, in 2006, I want to say? 
So no, 2008. 2008. Yeah. Pinky and Joy. I don't know what that what you're referencing with that. Still and please don't spam the chat. No okay, Power Rangers Zio number one. All right. So, what was supposed to happen? We were supposed to have the Power Rangers Zio review, I think, right before. Uh, the Cry for Justice reviews. But I wasn't done uh, uh, filming... I, I wasn't done uh, done filming the the, story, the the fight segments for it, and I was about to go out of town for MAGFest. So, Cry for Justice... So, so yeah, it was supposed to... Like, like there, was, there was a certain order to how this was supposed to go. I'm pretty sure it was either before or after. Like, but, like, for some reason, I, I wanted to do, a, like, a premiere of a Power Rangers Zeo at... Magfest or something along those lines. I cannot, for the life of me, recall what exactly the reason was. But things were ended up having to be uh, uh, put out out of order. I want to say Zeo was supposed to happen right before Cry for Justice, but I needed a video out. We weren't done yet. I didn't have everything filmed, and I wasn't going to have everything filmed. So instead, I started Cry for Justice and then interrupted it with the Power Rangers Zeo review and the fight. I wanted to do a thing with Mechakara where he would actually burst through a wall. Because as I mentioned last time, I, I looked into a lot of effects stuff from Backyard Effects with that YouTube channel. And they had a uh, a thing where you punch or burst through a wall. And I wanted to recreate that. That's why there's a big-ass piece of cardboard in the background of a lot of shots. Because I was going to do a wall-bursting shot using the cardboard. Oh. And then I never got around to doing it. Aww. So yeah, this was, uh, was the second Mechacara fight. It was obviously not as well planned out as the uh, as everything else. There's still 40 minutes left in this storyline. I'm actually going to take a quick break because I need to need to pee. So talk amongst yourselves for a minute. Actually, go, tell me about you that, that they think that Universe... Well, I think Universe... Even Stargate Universe had ended by the time that Lewis was I making this. I'm going to look it up now because I just need to. By the way, uh, I am Game Show Reviewer. I have taken over this live stream. Uh, please talk amongst yourselves about uh, how awesome game shows are. Eh, the only good game shows were once in the 90s. You're banned. <laughs> I'm joking, of course. Everyone knows the 80s. The 80s are the golden era of game shows. No, 90s had where in the world is Carmen San Diego? It wins by default. Ouch. Uh, May 9th, 2011. Okay, so I can't remember exactly when this is. Yes, uh, May 9th, 2011 was the last episode of Universe. So, uh, yeah. yes, press your luck. Whoop. Um, but please tell me you're almost done editing the finale. I am not editing the finale. Uh, I am doing the visual effects for the finale. Um... Who's line? Yes, great, great show. Uh, the reason I say the late eighties, early ninety, or the late eighties or the mid eighties are the uh, is the golden era game shows. I mean, come on, we had Pyramid, we had Press Your Luck, we had Scrabble. Oh crap! Um, comics, 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 comics. <laughs> what were you guys talking about? Uh, comics, game shows, <laughs> comics. Nikara <laughs> has fallen! Now I, GSR, am leader of the stream! <laughs> oh, I, I, the, the fact is, I love I could see a live feed of your camera, so that's why it's like the moment you came in, I'm like, oh crap. <laughs> <laughs> and I just look at lying, so I just said what you're actually talking about. <laughs> Oh, we also we also looked up because uh, someone I think uh, Eliza mentioned that maybe Universe had not ended May 9th, twenty eleven. So maybe Universe had ended by the time this episode came out. Orange Octopi Seven. Well, I'm gonna tune out then. I gotta get up early tomorrow. My favorite game show is Jeopardy, whose line is also awesome. My Alrighty, favorite game. So uh, I'm trying to think of like uh, anything else to mention here. Uh, Liz was doing her own show at the time, and uh, she want and since we were so linked at this point, uh, we decided to set up the villain that she was going to have in her show called Judas Liz. Uh, I think that her event, her eventual explanation for Judas Liz was going to be kind of like uh, the Jet Li movie, The One, where like 
so there was a there was a parallel universe Iron Liz going through and murdering other Iron Lizes to get their power. But don't quote me on that. But that was all. That was the deal that she explained to me. But Isn't yeah, funny? She... I know that concept not from the, that movie, but because Claremont tried to do a similar concept with Psylocke at one point. Yeah. <laughs> It's 4.45 um, a.m. for me right now. I skipped sleep for you, Lewis. Thank you so much, though. It's still going to be a while before we're done, so if you want to sleep, sleep. This is going to be posted publicly. What I uh, recall, if I remember correctly, this fight has original music. Is that correct? Yes! Okay, so I wanted to also make this kind of special. So I met Ron Wasserman at uh, Power Morphicon 2010 because I attended. Uh, and he is a, he's a stand-up guy, always wants to promote, uh, you know, other power inspirations, is willing to do work for them, and the, uh, uh, and, and, you know, he will, you can pay him according to, you know, what your budget is. My budget was still pretty limited at the time, so I think I, I didn't pay a huge amount for it, you know, oh, but he did a great job, I just supplied him with the, with the video, and, you know, he scored it. That is awesome. Hmm. Huh. In the in the Power Ranger style, or so yep. as I recall. So. See, I don't know why. I actually thought this fight was in the next compilation for some reason. Megacara, it's more of a time. This was yeah. I wanted to because uh, we were breaking the the old morpher, and I had a model of a cracked morpher that I used for this. Crap. Yeah, not as I, I had not as well detailed this as I as I did the original fight. Cause it was mostly supposed to be like a showcase of like various effects and other weapons in the arsenal of freedom. Is you still forget that punching robots on metal hurts. <laughs> Alright, we're gonna try to have Poyo do the same thing as before. Nope, that's out. The BFG. Which now has a slightly updated effect, and I do mean slightly. Yep. <laughs> yep, he adapts. He, he, he like, like I wanna make I, I, I wanna make sure that whenever Mecha Card is defeated, it's not by it's not the same way twice. Well, you haven't fought me before, Tin Face. Let's see how you deal against a real metal head. Ew. Yeah, man, the Judas Liz introduction here. Deal with the woman. I will have no more interruptions by shattering things. <laughs> well, yeah, the Arsenal of Freedom is a reference to uh, Next Generation. Uh, Star Trek Next Generation. Uh, it, it's a name of an episode, and 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 in the episode, it was a uh, a weapon supplier. Behold, the arsenal of freedom. Awesome. I had a mini version finally of the uh, of of the uh, Dragon Dagger music. And actually, the funny thing is, we filmed this fight over the course of a while, so if you pay attention to some of the background, it actually changes in a few shots. Yeah, I was just mentioned that. I think I've seen some things like that. Also, I was going to mention that it looks like you weren't wearing shoes. Oh, I wasn't. Yep. I never am. Ah! But it is your own, you know, it's your own home, so. Yep. Any last words before I punch a hole through your face, meat boy? Yeah. Zeo Gold Power Staff! That effect turned out really well. And now the Zeo weapons are actually having an effect on him because they're more powerful. 
Uh, Benjamin Hall, I'm calling Metcar by his real name, Rooster. No, we established last stream his real name is Tim. Yes! Yes, Tim! <laughs> oh yeah, the fake blood. Yep. It's not ketchup. Fourth wall kid, if you have a super chat, uh, uh, oh, you're you think you could have your own video game slash mobile game for a top fourth wall? Yes, I would love to actually have my own uh, video game. I, I see myself as a uh, my game as like a first person shooter. With either like I, like the magic gun being upgraded at over time to have different modes, or like various uh, modification versions of a top you know, weapons used on a top fourth wall. But there is a well, project you know, uh, copyright-free versions, anyway. Copyright-free you know versions, what? yeah. I think it's time. Specifically, it's Morphin Time! I did so many goddamn takes of trying to bring the Xeonizer together because I kept missing. <laughs> <laughs> Morphers are complicated sometimes. <laughs> and Zeo Ranger it's Linkara. This it's was another. Days like uh, these. It's days like these that you wish you had either the Space Morpher or the uh, or my personal favorite, although I know it's not yours. The yep. um, uh, what's the one from Lightspeed Rescue? Yeah, so this was another costume made, Pimp Kara. This was another costume made by the uh, by, by the prop lady. Uh, it's very it's very simple. It's actually just like three parts uh, th that she made. It's the wrist cuffs, the uh, uh, the little thing that goes over. Uh, uh, not really a shield. It's more it just because it, like instead of like sewing it directly onto a spandex shirt or something like that, it's just you know a thing that's floating over it. Hence why it, why my shoulders look like they have pads in them. It's because it's like there's this little this, this you know uh, plastic thing that I'm wearing and a belt, which you don't see the belt very much. Uh, and no, this outfit it does not exist anymore. It kind of deteriorated over time. So you will never see Zeo Ranger Linkar again. And yeah, it's yeah, it's too bad it's destroyed. Plus, I'm just like I'm you know I'm already overweight. I'm more overweight than I was before. I would look even worse in this now. Benjamin Hall, until real until name reveal, my head cannon rules. Well, that was the real no wasn't. You look amazing um, in that white. Looks really good on you. Thank you. I actually didn't think this looked very good at first because uh uh you know the bright white looks looks so. Uh, I thought it made my face look more red. And, uh, and standing out a lot more, but I'm glad that people like it. It has a good regal look. I think it's really the cuffs that that, uh, that make the difference. To oh me. yeah, it's that gold. Otherwise, it would look like a suit. You know? I love the Zio outfits. I think there's something about them that looks like a like such a, an upgrade on the Mighty Morphin. And I love the Mighty Morphin outfit. The only thing that annoys me about the Zio outfits is the symbols on the uh, as the faceplate of the helmet. That's the only thing that annoys me. Yeah, I get it. Like the star, the star on Red Ranger always annoyed the crap out of me. <laughs> and and I think if we pay attention here. Like I'm using the wrong fists in some of these shots. Do you really think your new powers can stop me? I am your undoing. I am. Yeah, yeah was, I'm, was I'm holding I'm holding him in, in one shot I'm holding him with the left hand and hitting him with the right reverse shot I'm hitting him with the left hand and 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 and, and holding him with the right continuity <laughs> great continuity uh fourth wall kid how would you bring back the Zeo outfit like how would you upgrade it further or what would you change about it nowadays uh, I probably instead of having it be uh, a separate piece for for the outfit uh, for that uh, for the for the thing over my shoulders and 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 on the on the front of my chest that would it would actually be incorporated into like the shirt and whatnot. I'd have a better hat too. That that was like a pretty stock like white hat I got from Target. I'd want to have like a bigger brimmed hat. That line is not Zeo, but still, I had the toy now. Oh, how I wish it was just now glitter. Then, I believe when we first met, there was something I said. Oh, yes. 
You are an android, but me? Art of a mouse! And the magic coin is still inside the morpher. Take note, Lakara, when punching robots, use that gadget at all times. Who the hell are you? <laughs> Don't you recognize me, dear? <laughs> what would it's your battleizer look like? Judas I just said it, glitter. Just die. I, I have one that. I have a man punch gaff. It worked. Have a two for one. And, and Judas Liz begins her tradition of just kind of moving, moving away and teleporting off. It's kind of like shuffling okay? out of the oh, show. Great. How are you? Great too. Take a look for yourself. And this is his, his little speech here is, is supposed to be a reference to uh, 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 Zed and Rita. By the power and force of lightning, make my make our monster grow. And we never see her again. We see her one more time, and then she's gone. This uh, music, if I remember correctly, is uh... it's uh, Star Trek: Next Generation, but more best of both worlds music. Okay, I prepared for this. No, it's not best of both worlds. Wow. That's Q Who. No, it is. It's it's uh uh. It may not be Q Who, but it is definitely some Ron Jones music. I think it might, might it's be. Ron, yeah, I know it's Ron Jones. It's just that's definitely not best of both worlds. Draco uh, Rex, wait, there's more to the phrase than just make my monster grow? It depends on the episode. Yep. Mm -hmm. Uh huh. Allison on the billboard. Yeah, I replaced whatever was on the billboard with a uh, with a uh, with an obscure Super Presents uh, uh, thing. It was the Defector. That's what it's from. Oh, yes. Okay. About. Trying to film in my ki in, in, in the kitchen of that apartment was always a pain in the ass. It's just like there's a single light. It's super bright. Now this is. I'll just build myself a giant robot, but then I realized, well, who has time to build a giant robot, really? So what are you gonna do? So then I figured. And 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 and, and we were, we already established that uh, that that Doctor Insano had built Neutro. So why don't we? So it's so for a giant robot. Why don't we say we stole Neutro? Ah, <laughs> uh, the Duke. You said you made it so Mechakura can't be killed the same way twice. Did Doomsday inspire you to add that? Uh, not intentionally, no. You are. And as we said earlier, did we ever have like a Power Rangers in Space reference? Oh, this Power is the Power Rangers, Rangers in Space Morpher, Morpher the Astro Morpher. Three, three, five, seven. And as I said, I screwed around in 3D Studio Max. At one point, I, ma I made my own mech uh, called White Sword uh, based on Gundam stuff. And uh, and I had built a cockpit for it, a very primitive cockpit. And I used a lot of uh, uh, Star Trek uh, uh, Elkar's menu stuff. So I just, add, so I took that, that model, added in, uh, the top of fourth wall symbol on either side there, and just reused that. Adrian, I had a headcan uh, that Liz yeah. left because Linkara spent too much time talking to his hologram. <laughs> Linkara stole that from the president? Yep. I think, I think it was right. impeached by that point, wasn't I'm it? Ready to go now. I want to say so. Activate the control yeah. console. The and now time for a Ghostbusters 2 reference. It's right in front of you. Like one of the earlier Ghostbusters 2 references, I had, and I had never mentioned uh, Ghostbusters. I haven't mentioned Ghostbusters 2 yet. But I got an NES advantage specifically well, for this. I got Diddy and never finished it. I had Diddy and never finished the console. As well. What do I pay you for again? Your other robot buddy is still out there, you know. So as I, I've said, so I think I said last time the the uh, uh, the prop lady made a neutro costume. I, I commissioned this. It was designed for Liz to wear because you know I, I I needed to be in the shot and plus I'm overweight. So like so it was designed to fit her. I think Will's the only one who's been able to wear it. But unfortunately, this thing wreaked havoc with the green screen. It just would yeah. not, yo, yo, it's made of a very reflective material, 
So the green would kept, keep bleeding in, and I was there was nothing I could do. And I was, I was going on a deadline here. I wanted to premiere this at MAGFest. There was going to be a whole, you know, you know, there was going to be a whole thing. So I, I had to turn. So I was like, I'm desperate here. I don't know what I can actually do uh, to make this work. So I turned to anyone I knew who did green screen stuff. Phelos was already out of town because he was going to MAGFest. Uh, other people were just not available, and it was, like, really late at night. So, the only person... So, who did I turn to? I'm gonna let the audience guess. Who did I turn to for help on this? Who do you think I look to to try to get this thing... Uh, uh, to get this get these green screenshots put together, finally? I'm gonna let the chat uh, try to figure this out, because I don't think they'll guess it unless I mention it before. Doug Walker, nope. Film Brain, nope. Angry Joe, nope. Well, Joe was actually a good guess. Game Show Reviewer, nope. I hadn't met him yet. Yo Mama, nope. As I said, Phelan was already not was the other not there. Vega, nope. Hadn't met her yet. Hollywood Effects Guru, Rob Botton, nope. Allison Spoonie, nope. Eliza, nope. Chad Rocco, Kyle Colgren, nope. Nope, 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 nope. I definitely haven't met Lewis yet. <laughs> Lucas Sousa, you are the closest, so I'm giving it to you. Team Four Star, in particular, Lana Pator. Uh, ah, nice. Nick had been doing his own videos on, uh, on on his YouTube channel where he was in front of a green screen talking about uh, Dragon Ball movies, and he was uh, he was awake at like two in the morning, and I asked him, dude. I know this is like last second. Is there any chance that you know what the hell to do to do this? And he put this together. Nice. So yeah, I owe Lanny big for for managing to get this done with and 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 fix the green screen and actually make it and and make the settings work properly. Lanny That's is awesome. a good guy. Uh, I don't remember hearing this being said in the last stream. Otherwise, I would have known it, and I didn't even know that. Uh, these are all shots of Minneapolis. I see the IDS tower in the background there. So I'm a little bit continuity is thrown out the window in terms of size. Yep. <laughs> it's just meant to be a, like a, like an homage to Power Rangers. Right. Also, Mechakara now has 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 laser hands, has has lightning hands, because everybody oh, does. Everyone, yeah, everyone has that ability. Uh, Lunastar, yes, effectively uh, his government handler. IDS, no, IDS Tower. I-D-S. D is in Dalek. <laughs> yeah, you wouldn't want an IDS Tower. Yeah, no, that would be bad. It wouldn't be the weirdest thing, though. <laughs> oh, also, this music is a replacement. Originally, the Power Rangers Zeo theme was playing, but obviously couldn't keep that around. I have really got to find some good reference pictures of Neutra see if I can build a model. That was a really poor shot of me, uh, uh, of my hand just being inside there. I should have had like wires or something coming out. <laughs> I've got to mute this for the, for the audio again. And, and Neutro, again, again, the, the, the I use the same BFG as shot, but now, like, light blue for some reason. And Kablamo. The only thing that's missing is the, is the slow fall and explosion. And Mechikara's hand survived, because it got, uh, because it got uh, blown to the ground and it shrank. And hinting at the future, I think I attached some fishing line to it to try to hide that I was the one controlling it. You come to me with promises. Oh yeah, I actually come to think of it. That was a fan. A fan sent me that hand, uh, just just so I could have like a fa a can because I think, uh, I think I lost the original Mechakara hand in the move. <clears throat> and now Cry for Justice finale because I needed. Okay, yeah, the Zio, yeah Zio had to be had to happen before Cry for Justice. Because I knew that Cry for Justice, being such a depressing story, would end on Linkara getting his ass kicked. 
That guy you don't know, how did Mechacara come back for to boldly flee? In story to the plot hole, something to do with that. It did not. What save? Uh, uh, this will be explained in a later in, in a later storyline. But uh, uh, Linkara speculates that because he was using the magic coin at the time, it somehow preserved him or kept him alive. And while that did not end up being the explanation for those particular events, that is the canon explanation of what happened. He did survive. He he just ended up uh, uh, following the uh, the critics during Suburban Nights and then into to boldly flee. And now, yeah, because I need because it was time because one of the other things I wanted to do with Vice to separate him from Mechicar and show him show him is different was he did not want to get directly involved in events. He was the Emperor of Evil or whatever. There's no reason why he should dirty his hands with any of this crap. So instead, he shows up, and, and so it's like, fine, I'll do it myself. Oh, TJ Omega, it was you. You were the one who did it. Watch TJ Omega. His videos are great. I haven't watched him. I, sorry, I haven't watched your stuff in forever, but, like, uh, I remember your stuff being really good. Did the Neutro costume fall apart? No, I still have the Neutro costume. I think it's in the garage right now. But yes, thank you, TJ Omega, for sending that prop, because I still have that prop, and I still use it. Upgrades for my systems. I think that's Liz's hand there. And what is the result? A wrecked machine, and this universe's champion even more powerful. Than so anyway, yeah, I wanted Vice to be, uh, uh, I wanted Vice to be like a different sort of villain. I also wanted, sh and also I needed to start justifying the idea of this guy is is a, is scary. He's a multiversal threat. He is not someone you trifle with. So Linkara needed to lose to him. Sure, he needed to, sure he could survive the fight, but he needed to actually like beat Linkara to a bloody pulp. What might be the most serious moment of the series yet. Yep. <laughs> and like Santa still being a comedic villain. I'm actually amazing to me how that quote is hilarious and terrifying at the same time. Hmm. One thing you don't realize is that no more time. I will deal with the champion myself. I've never felt so sorry to have paid full price for something. This comic blows, and I have to be reminded of it all the time. How can my day get any worse? Never. I say that all the time. There's supposed to be like I, I I didn't do the effect very well, but it's supposed to be like flashing lights, like 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 his presence like warps the electronics. Uh yeah, Eliza, I know I make it a point never to say that. You did make Vice a serious threat. That was the idea. And also this low angle shot to just to just like like start establishing him. Especially because I was actually when I actually put the Vice outfit together and I wore it. I was not happy with it because it looked like because I felt like my head was too uh, like my head on my body was too big. It just it just looked kind of goofy. But then Will put on the outfit, and and he got to be the uh, the physical actor for Lord Vice from here on out, and he did such a phenomenal job with it. And and I you know try to do cinematography to make him look imposing and cool, and it turned out so goddamn well. Uh, we will allow spoilers for future arcs. Uh, however, we do suggest you keep questions to this arc. Yes. Uh, let's put it like that. Now this is, now I started using best of both worlds music, uh, as, as a light motif Lord for Vice. Vice. So you are the champion of this universe. There it is, that box in the background. I was supposed to turn that cardboard box into like a fake wall that I, that that car was gonna punch through. One champion foolishly tries to defend that universe from perceived threats. So far in my conquests, I have defeated. The first time we see him like in prop in, in good lighting, and yeah, this like like, like the cinematography is actually working to help make him imposing. You know I try to make me. him seem taller. Then maybe this is the one where you finally get stopped. You are welcome to try. And I fixed some of the audio for this compilation. This is cute. Yep, this is cute music. So I'm gonna have to uh, mute some of this, but like, I fixed some of the sound effects because originally uh, there was uh, I mean, nothing and it didn't sound right. 
So I was gonna mute this for a second because of music. But like that's uh, like again, Blip let me get away with this stuff. Liz was out of town when we filmed this stuff, so which was just as well because like it helped the idea of Linkara is alone. He's trying to put stuff together. And the Zeonizer, since there's no real life Zeo crystal to draw power from, it's just it, they just recharge it. I will attempt to hold him off and give you some more time. <laughs> I love this bit. <laughs> Doctor Who music, remembrance of the Daleks. BFG. And it wouldn't be as cool to just have the single shot, so like, continuous beam of energy, he just blocks it. Now mind you, I screwed this up, I should have had the, 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 uh, the laser beam come from up top. But this still looks good. Your bravery is admirable, but misguided. Oh yeah, someone asked earlier, who does the voice for Vice? I do. Uh, I do a Lord Zed impression. And then, and then I pitch shift it down until it's Vice. Uh, also had a slight reason. So and finally, the explanation for the entity. And, every, and, and all the commenters like, well, wait, why doesn't he just team up with Linkara to stop him? Uh, to, to, to do it. Because that's not how he works. He's tried to work with people before, and it's gone badly for him. Vice just finds it more efficient to take over a universe, or in this case, a planet, and just like, and then run things efficiently to drive the, the entity away. Sexy ASMR with Lord Vice Wed. Was the end of all things. Uh, I would like Lord Vice to answer that question. Uh, what's the what's the uh, the, 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 the sexy a a ASMR with Lord Vice Wed? I conquered worlds to protect them from it. I did say sexy no ASMR with Lord Vice in that voice. Uh, sure. And I have chased it here. Is trapped on this world. Yeah, poor point. Will not allow it to escape. Yeah, villain, plus villains don't and see themselves as villains. They see there's no other choice to accomplish their goals. <laughs> you know if what Vice is serious because he actually wears like shoes. And again, I need to keep establishing just how powerful Vice is to raise the stakes. Yo, we'll use Pyramid Head. He he will kill Pyramid Head. I gotta mute this again a bit just to try to avoid uh, copyright stuff. So like, and once again, no sells the Great Knife. Mm-hmm. Just like absorbs him, uh, absorbs him. I like that effect I did there with a the little smear of the uh, thing. And Vice is slow moving. He's 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 he doesn't have to move quickly. He doesn't have to do any uh, uh, serious wing. This uh, Vice's gun, as many people pointed out, it's actually a, a toy lightsaber uh, hilt. I can't remember whose, I'm sure the chat will say, but yeah, I just cut out the lightsaber part, and, and so, like, it opens up, fires, and, and the uh, sound effect is the TOS phaser. And this is me, uh, him, him, him pulling up like this, that I am actually on a ramp walking backwards to try to make it look like he's lifting me up. Oh, nice. The old, yeah, the old plastic Captain America shield. Uh, Forced Unleashed Star Killer. Uh, it's both a sword and a gun. Ruby reference. Self a giant, brave, but futile. Very effective. So what do you do to Pyramid Head? Because it looks like he t he takes his soul or adds his power to to his uh, suit. Uh, just like I'm not sure exactly. He just kind of like yo know, yo know, destroys his soul. So the Lord Vice uh, shield part. Uh, pause once we had the close up here. Uh, most of it is like you know uh, kind of vinyl panels on a, a kind of craft foam base and two and, and that part right there was attached via velcro so that one panel we we knew ahead of time that we would do this we could detach that panel and put on one which had this effect on there to make it look like it melted the metal like when it's blue claws are in when it's sith claws are out yeah it's, yeah it was definitely the color changing one 
I remember that. I still have that thing, but I never use the actual lightsaber function on it anymore. So the, uh, is that panel, uh, permanently uh, part of the costume or was it switched out? The handle? Oh, the first appearance. No, the, the panel, the, the one we were just talking about. Oh, the panel. Yeah, we swapped, yeah, we swapped it out and put, and put the uh, right one back on there to indicate that he repaired it. Okay. But, oh, the first appearance of the transporter effect. Yep. Yeah, because I, cause I wanted a unique, easy-to-do teleportation effect, and I found the gradient wipe, and the gradient mm -hmm. wipe, I think, looks pretty good. It looks like someone is being broken up and then, and then you know, disappearing. Do you have to and reconstruct I... any of Vice's outfit when he came back later? Nope, I still had all the pieces. How'd you go with the teleportation for Vice, I just said? Uh, what does Vice look like under his helmet? Well, back then, probably mostly human. Now he looks like a shade. <laughs> Well, <laughs> now he's dead, so... <laughs> Brave yeah, survives. Runs at the again. slightest sign of damage on his suit. You remember, he's... Uh, like That was a thing we were trying to establish about him also. He's really egotistical. Like, he really thinks that, that he is the only one that can stop the entity, and thus any damage to his suit uh, you know, is a risk to the entire universe. Like, like, I cannot... I can't risk myself because who else will kill the entity? True, he's dead, but will he return? Eh... We'll see. This is Jimmy has like fancy plans and pants to match. And we'll never see him again. And yeah, the first time where Linkara realizes I could have died. Like he is freaked out by this moment. Oh, I'm sure. Like he was he was completely not prepared for this. And time to do some drama stuff. I gotta step away for a second. And what were you gonna I want to pause. I would have made a difference. Ah, uh, no, you can go ahead and know, continue. I don't know, but at least right. I could have been here. Look, I don't think it was just him getting knocked on his keista. That comic he was reviewing wasn't exactly bringing him happy thoughts. You know what I'm saying? It took me a while to get the Harvey voice down. I should get it more deeper yes. like this. Okay, call me if you need. Pants to match. Guess they're not the flying pants then. I rearranged this living room so many times from when, Le when Les lived with me, from when we first moved in. I've been trying to fix like when she moved rigging. out, I moved my my uh, editing rig into uh, like one of my computers into the living room because it's more comfortable. Yeah. This is the first time a car thinks this might not be I'm fun sure anymore. Yeah. And then eventually uh, I rearranged it so that uh, both computers were in my office. And then I like I put the couch against the wall, because then I moved the TV into the bedroom because there was no reason to have the TV out there anymore. I lived alone. I threw the BFG at him. I threw Pyramid Head at him. Mechakara said Vice was the one who upgraded him. I could barely stop Mechakara. How the hell are we supposed to fight something that kills? I think I'm, I'm pretty sure I'm reading from the script uh, during this because this is a long monologue well, and I needed to be able to like you know say know get all this out. Yeah, but I don't think it's done me any good so far. These days I break it up uh, into smaller yeah, bits and I just uh, you know cut cut to reaction shots of the other person. With him or something. You didn't exactly give me a chance. But you are doing a good job of hiding. You're reading directly from the script. Hmm. The guy conquers entire universes. What would teaming up with me accomplish? He just seems oh yeah, that was also me addressing uh, uh, you know, people saying, "Why doesn't he just team up with Linkara?" Because he, he doesn't see. Because why would he? He doesn't need like Linkara for anything. An orange until it's yeah. pulverized. That's all we are to him. Just run off. That's all we are to him. Run off. Listen, Twinkle and Icing Death need some sharpening. Which is what Vice wants you to think, because that's how he thinks. Kate Cast reviews. You don't have much cover out there. I rearranged the living room a while ago. Yeah, because I didn't. Because yeah, I even used the couch as cover at the beginning of the gun and sorcery arc. And you know what? This didn't make me feel any better. I still have no idea how I'm gonna deal with Vice. And three, two, one. Realization. And as people pointed out, this is Why kind of this is kind me? of inspired by Doctor Who, uh, uh, Silence in the Library, and and Forest of the Dead, where uh, where the Doctor realizes she gave me a screwdriver. I, I gave her a screwdriver. Why would I do that? I had all this time to prepare. Why would I give her a screwdriver? 
So yeah, in this and case, I'm it's back. a car realizing you're putting all the pieces together and coming up with a plan to finally stop uh, uh, Vice. I know how to beat him! And again, Star Trek music. Harvey, what's your status on retuning the fans? And one of the few, t and this uh, is a, uh, this is a, uh, uh, yes, me. You don't need this fancy crap. This is a, 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 a pre. Bullets aren't going to uh, win this uh, battle, review portion storyline. Again, we, we would possible. do this as we were starting to build up towards the finale. Dude, I will pay you to let me use this thing in the fight. By this point, no, the entity is indeed the in in nineties kid. Dude, you are such a This is a pre-review. Yes, I yeah, do. this is before the review starts. Were you able to make the modifications? Yep. Oh. I think it's because I realized I needed. I, 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 there's only so many episodes until the fina until the storyline finale, so I need to. Uh, uh, so I need to like I need more time. So oh well, we're doing pre-show, uh, you know, you know, pre-review segments for the storyline, and people hated that. They absolutely hated when that happened because people prefer the storyline just be at the end. I, I actually like the stuff before the, 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 the uh, review, but it, I'm weird. A lot of opinions about the storyline have inverted. It'll be interesting to see when we actually when, when we have the storyline finale for Contest of Champions how people feel because there's been so many episodes with more review than storyline stuff. Uh, oh, and this way, and and, and because and thus we're bring and since we're like yo we're starting to build up the conclusion, this was kind of a mistake to bring. Lieutenant Monroe back because because people thought that he was one of my recurring characters. He's not. He's really not. Uh, you know, I wanted my characters to be my characters, and I don't own the rights to Ensign or Lieutenant Monroe. But by this point, you know, Elite Force Two had long been out. Let's establish that that's still happening in his universe. So he's on the Enterprise E, and he's in the uh, the, the you know the proper uniform. Well, mostly the proper uniform, it's a bit out of uniform, for, especially for being on the bridge. Well, I assume this is the bridge and not just some random computer console. Understood and appreciated. Two bridges? Two bridges? <laughs> Sorry, One I watched bridge. the episode. Luck? One bridge! Episode <laughs> one Riker, one bridge! <laughs> Well, Finally, it's Star Trek really reference. Like I understand. <laughs> <laughs> so what are you gonna yeah, Monroe would be mentioned in the Sleepwalker storyline, but that's it. Yeah, because I wanted because I established because you know what Reviewing I've already put him in the storyline. I might as well just like you know reference the the transporter buffer, and then one of the first times I'll do what I have to Joe, record review a comic book. And since we already established no Joe as part of this universe, let's actually have him involved in the finale. And Joe had the same kind of black cloak outfits. Look, Joe, if you didn't like have uh, bargain, uh, uh, you an ending forces, uh, uh, now, portion to that I last need review. Your support. Yeah, I can't remember why that was. I mean, I think just, I just think just I, ener I think energy wise, and especially with that finale, operation. it needed to lead into I'm gonna review a comic book. It needed to be pre theme song. Bar, you're gonna I just remember uh, the um, a I good switch, portion. Of, I debated including these in the edit. The, uh, the 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 V minus countdown. I really debated including those, but like, serious, eh, it's case. not really needed. Oh yeah, back then uh, to start to lead up to the to uh, was it the finale or for Vice's arrival in Cry for Justice. I believe it was Vice's arrival because I don't remember there being one in Cry for Justice. Yeah, we were starting to build. We were building up the arrival of Lord Vice again. Vice had a lot of great build up. I felt like I felt like we actually did a really good job of setting everything up, building towards the finale. And 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 the V minus thing is actually a reference to Babylon Five. Uh, Z minus when when uh, Sheridan would go to Zahadoom. Yes. That would be very, very sad. Oh yeah, and the uh, so so much like so like with the Mechakara finale, uh, I decided we were gonna have we were gonna have two episodes at once. One with less, and uh, in this case, it's still since people at this point were used to storyline stuff. I was okay with having uh, uh, more storyline in the Youngblood review than I did in the Mechakara finale. So in this case, we have our setup here. It's still somewhat light storyline, but we're building, but we're actually like, you know, setting up. This is, you know, we're, we're taunting Vice to coming out and attacking us. Poyo report. It is confirmed. The energy trace is identical. Good. And that's the last thing we needed to know. Are you sure this is going to work? Mechakara summoned your doppelganger, presumably from Vice's ship. 
which means he must have some way of contacting Vice through the time shield. It all comes around, Gary. Now, it all so comes we... around. <laughs> I shall rip his head from his neck. I think that's Liz in the uh, in the vice uh, in the in the uh, uh, shade outfit. Okay, the there's the slice it down. there's the panel of repair. Yep. But don't you think your emotions are impairing your judgment just a little? Do not presume to advise me, assassin. I allow you to fulfill your own goals only when Did a quick uh, 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 repeating of a shot just because I didn't have enough uh, footage right before the dialogue. A That's a descent sound effect. Android. Shade one, put it on. This is Linkara calling Lord Vice. If you're receiving this, I know I was inspired by something for this little speech, but I can't remember what exactly. Listen for a minute. Probably Doctor, listen, something Doctor Who related. I just wanted to tell you uh, this sounds an awful lot like the Pandorica see, speech. I was once told yeah. that you were the stuff of nightmares for gods and monsters alike. And that's why I'm so honored, you see. You've seen fit to show me your true colors. And the main one is a big, bright oh, shade of yellow. All that you see, you conquer, huh? Well, I guess you never really did set your eyes on Where me did then. Judas Liz come you from? Uh, we talked about that a bit earlier. Running for your life. And, it's a good <laughs> and now it's time for you. Judas Liz to just slide out of the storyline and never be seen again. You're not up to the task of facing <laughs> the slide away. Never. That you're so no, afraid don't, don't, of. Yo, bye. What? Why don't you the only thing that would have made that funnier is if you, uh, is if you well, had digitally slid her it. element out After of the frame. All, <laughs> it's what you're good at. Oh, that's it. It's However, it's the con. I'm laughing at the superior intellect. The superior, yeah. It's it's you Kirk taunting fine. Khan into into attacking him in the nebula. Yeah. That's why we also have the Wrath of Khan music right there. Diddly Durhey. Oh, that there makes sense. Messages away. <laughs> and since we were being a little more serious with this storyline, I you know, I wanted to have uh, just like a calm before the storm moment and address the fact that this the, is all really weird. I love that. You know, it's like, okay, message is sent. I don't need this damn thing anymore. Full, yeah, but you just imagine Vice yelling at Judas Liz, full impulse power. Yep. Professor Harmless, Judas Liz got a contact, contact Chuck on Cunningham. Chuck Cunningham. <laughs> Full power! Damn you! Stop and think <laughs> and thus the Doctor Who Classics review. Uh, so yeah, when I just... What was going to happen, the original plan was actually going to be Power Rangers Turbo versus Beetleborg's Metallics would be the review. And again, it would be, you know, a Power Rangers fight. Because I thought that every single storyline finale was going to have a Power Rangers fight. And when I decided to drop that and make it Doctor Who, Power Rangers Zeo became the review for the uh, the second Mechacara fight. And I want, and thus I started to bring in a Doctor Who homages instead, and it all came together a lot better. So now storylines tend to be homages to various franchises. Some of them in subtler ways, some of them in much more overt ways. The Doctor Who one is definitely one of the more overt ones. Right. We're about to find you ever stop and think about the fact their lives are kind of weird? The framing of this shot is awful. Whole bunch of other crap yeah, I was wondering why you put the lamp in there. It's like I think it's because well, I was re I was once again reading off a script and, and there was no way to hide the shot. No, not really. Yeah, the framing of this is awful. Well, I should be right. both of us should be on the opposite ends of the screen look, if we're looking that way. Look, this looks better right here. Can't you review like a Power Rangers comic or uh, something? No headroom. Yeah, I just reviewed a Power Rangers comic a few weeks ago. Sorry. Oh, uh, one of the reasons why the contest of champions correspondence segment looks so. News uh, and authentic sure like is because sure Linkar's visual effects artist, i.e., me, right. worked in the news industry. So I know how to, I know how to frame them. I know how to frame the shots and everything. And that, yeah, my coffee table. I still have that same coffee table. It's a little more worn down now. Uh, it's uh, uh, you know, trying to bring the comic oh, out for the thing. The Doctor Who comic. <laughs> Well, well, lovely eyebrow. Suck. Maybe it was at least a Need. little entertaining. I think I know why the laugh was in that in that scene. I was waiting for someone to say it. <laughs> I mean, you Took do you long you enough. Laughs, after all. Took you long enough. <laughs> <laughs> I was waiting for the opportune time to say I it. I wasn't going to say it. I just kind of... <laughs> I gifted that one to everyone. So Y'all are fired. 
hey, hey, I didn't do anything. Y'all are grudgingly rehired. <laughs> Wait, why was the lamp there? They're referencing the Lincar as a lamp reviewer thing. That frame freeze. I have such I have such an expressive face and great for for, for little shots like this. Uh, so, so oh, memeable. Gee, uh, it's, it's actually where I get a lot of the uh, a lot of the shots Ready? for your Ready title cards everybody. for your live streams. Mm. I this universe of... now, punch it! I love the energy of this of this fight. Will could actually do more complex martial arts moves, so we were so we decided, okay, let's actually like like have you do some stuff. And try to make it, and, and try to show that Vice actually still can fight, but like, you know, we're, we're, we're having to move a bit faster, you know, you, know, you know, more high energy, more just stuff happening, and we're just busting out everything we've already established and try to use to fight him. This, uh, this music might be one of my personal favorites from season five of Doctor Who. Oh, yeah. Do Murray, oh, yeah. I love Murray Gold's Doctor Who music. Like, oh, I'm sorry. Like... This, this, this is from 11th Hour. Um, I was thinking this was from the third episode, the, uh, uh, the the oh, fires well. in space. And very obviously, yes, I, I, I was sick and tired of the insulting remarks about Liz at the time, so, uh, like, I threw in this dialogue and freaking respect her, goddammit. Nowadays, I'm... <laughs> uh, uh, no real world stuff. What are HBS fans? So what is the review of the lamp in the episode? Uh, a different Target $20 lamp. Speaking of, uh, speaking of Murray Gold, did you hear he's back for Doctor Who? Yes. Yeah, I, I, I don't know if he's back for just the specials or if he's back permanently, but like at the very least, we needed we needed either his music back or some other person. I like this shot too, where it's like he like passes it by, grabs me, and drags me over to the wall. Me. I also think that one of the weak. I think we'll back to discuss this other time. <laughs> Tenth Doctor. I was gonna mention the music of the recent Doctor Who season. Yeah, let's use let's use the sonic uh, the, the the sonic screwdrivers as like you know your sound weapon. Yep. This is the music track yep. from uh from that third episode. It's not very well indicated here, but he's supposed to be like crushing his hands here with that. That's better indicated. <laughs> and now, Lieutenant Monroe. And he's using the uh, the weapon and, and still throwing in some Power Age references. This is the Magna Defender's weapon. And you know what? I gotta 3D print that because I actually like the the Magna Defender's uh, uh, weapon. And that's just the toy version. Like, like if I can like do like a proper like big version of it. Uh, um, is Lewis quiet for you? Is Lewis uh, like uh, mute for you as well? No. Oh. Am I muted? Oh. I, it looks like your mouth was moving, but I couldn't hear you talking. Well, there is probably a minor delay, or maybe like I opened my mouth for a second there, and then something like that. Okay. Uh, so I... Vi yeah, Vice was this close beating him. I wanted to still indicate, like, like if Ang if Joe's attack hadn't worked, we'd all be dead. We'd have lost. Yeah. <laughs> so this was a huge gamble. Yep. 3D printed proper because they're a neat thing to make. Yes, they are. As I continue to play with this little Descent uh, Pyro. I love so, one of those. I think, like I said, I, I think I'm going to print a bunch of them and sell them at too many games. Because uh, actually they are, because they're one of those few models that actually I'm allowed to sell. Like It's only Creative Commons attribution uh, according to the license for, to for the uh, license on that one. So I just got to, you know, make sure that, that they're all printed with like a little thing indicating who originally made the model. So, question, are you planning on ever printing a uh, first contact phaser rifle? Uh, I could do that, but uh, but I think I had one originally, and then when we were filming the 300th episode, Vega accidentally knocked it over and it broke in half. Oh. Uh, so yeah, we oh. just need to actually like we need to actually like you know put that thing back together again. I think I still have the pieces, mind you. That thing oh. is heavy. If I do another, True. if I if, if I have another one of those, I need to like make it lighter because man, that thing is just a just a brick to carry around. That's meant to be, but you know. Uh, so yeah, this and now, at some point during this, the lights on his shield went out. 
Because they're not on anymore, th therefore he's not getting power from the what? ship anymore. Shade One, report. Why have you not returned me? Shade One, report. I think that's our oh. cue. Uh, Dresden Nova, was Monroe using the Magnifender gun because both characters are space faring military types? It was more just I had the gun and I liked the gun. I liked the sound effects attached to it too. What have you done? The Magnet Defender, Defender stuff is actually really Oh, Angry Joe, are you receiving me? And that was a, a, a fan made Power Rangers communicator which lit up. Unfortunately, the, uh, the, the the band on it did not connect properly, so it looks like I had masking tape on it. To the right, to the right! And Joe uh, filmed all this uh, stuff on his own based off of like the brief script notes, and he did a fantastic job with this. Attack of the Angry I Army! I remember you told me when we were making the movie, you know, you've always tried to give Angry Joe an excuse to use his lightning. Yeah, because the anniversary movies never let him use his force lightning. Because again, Doug didn't pay attention to other people's videos. The hijacking of Omicron 1. Yep. But... How? How could these forces get What became the Angry Army? I think he still has them. It just he's used them less in videos because it's like, you know, more complex filming stuff. Is that? The name's Angry Joe, Lord of Land. Give you too much credit. Gotcha. <laughs> thank you so much. Yes, th thank you, Dresden Nova. Sometimes I think about this stuff a lot and I have a lot of, and, and, and I d have put a lot of thought into it. Other times it's, yeah, this is cool. And yeah, Blurry Link Sano here. One of the last things I filmed, I think, because I was running out of time, and the uh, uh, and yeah, the autofocus was not quite working correctly. Bill White, I talked about the Lord Zed inspiration stuff earlier in the stream. Rare Link Sano W. Yep. It all it all comes together. It all comes around, Gary. Save a small key. Still friends with Angry Joe. Uh, yeah. We don't talk very often because yo, know, dude's busy as all hell. But as far as I know, we're still friends. But dude's busy as all hell as well, so I don't really call on him to do a bunch of stuff. Joe could do more to the shades with a single handgun than it took Linkara, who needed help originally. Well, yeah, because he's Angry Joe. Coming here yourself was your mistake. I had Poyo examine the debris of the shades we destroyed. None of them had any internal Bringing it back to uh, the shade debris that we had from the fight. From ship. It had a very just, just, just big ol' exposition dump. When you came to fight me the last time. Oh, sure. Maybe in other universes... You don't need to use my full name. We suffered Eurovision together. I wouldn't say it. We suffered Eurovision. We had a fun time. Uh, yeah, Crimson. Uh, Crim uh, 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 they organized a, a Eurovision party a couple weeks ago. We watched that. That was great. Bill uh, White, we addressed that earlier in the stream, too. You yep. need a constant supply of power in order to stay strong. But I'm willing to bet it's even worse than that. Indeed it is. When I damaged your suit, you just like just like unloading all this exposition to explain all this without. stuff. I think You're I'm better about this nowadays, but yeah, it's a big old just exposition dump with Doctor Who music over it. And when I Although I think I've replaced the Doctor Who music since then because I, I actually found uh, the raw files of this, which I thought I had deleted. Because there came a point where I started keeping them, but for hard drive space reasons, I don't have the original Mechacar raw footage. Do you think that was my only source of power? Which makes me I am Lord Vice. Everything I see, I conquer, I can't and I will not be defeated by the likes of you. Da, 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 Doctor Who music. Gotta, gotta. That's the first time you used the Zeo theme over this, because originally we had the rock, original Ron Lasser music. I think that's another World of Warcraft reference. And this is real armor that she had. It was heavy as all hell, so we couldn't use it a lot. That that shot didn't quite look right because we were because we were all just like, yo, know, kind of uh, 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 linked together. And by this point, I had gotten the Green Ranger costume that the fans had told me to buy because I found it on eBay and it actually fit me because, you know, overweight. So, Time for a fan in, service moment. Still in, the, in the Green Ranger costumes? I still do, actually, yes. I believe it's a D&D &D reference. Got it. Okay, so it's a D&D &D thing. Yeah. Uh, Corella Morethian is um, hey, the creator of the elves. You so she can stab you. And a reference back to the original Shade Fight. I'm distracting you so she can stab you. 
You have got to do that weekend at least one more time. That I'm just trying to so she can stab you. Have to have her come, you know, for no reason. Yep. Uh, this was, yeah, this, uh, by this point, I was better at doing the, the split screen thing, so I was able to have everyone on, on board. I want to say that, like, yeah, Liz is slightly cut off there. Everybody take aim. It's pretty clean. Um, this. Yeah, this it's really clean. Be the end. <gasps> no. Are the swords real? Yes, they are. I mean, as real as any kind of yo know, yo know, replica sword is in this case, it was made. They were made of metal. I always liked how that luggage looked like a smiley Jeez, face. Is that Mook still alive? Yes, but he is unconscious. Dude, we should just shoot him again. I remember there was some talk about the fact that either I should have killed him, or I should have, or or that exiling him was like. Uh, uh, was like Your unjust, something along those lines. Were very thorough. This I filmed this near the apartment. Uh, I just suits, went out there the with both outfits and just long, like, yo, know, filmed it very quickly. I dubbed over because you could hear like, yo, know, cars There's moving no in, the, in the background. No civilization. And no the idea, and, and that would be kind of bad. Thousand light years. If, if you know, we were ha if we were doing this and yo, know, there's no civilization around, a car can be heard passing by. <laughs> was there were talking about unmasking him? No, I wanted to keep it. I want to always keep his his, his real appearance a secret. Yeah, it was still, it's winter in Minnesota, so everything is snowy wasteland. So I think that also helped that made things look good. For the his blue soul arc, uh, there is a shot that takes place on this. You know, world. Uh, was it filmed at this time? Uh, it was not. I did not have that uh, that uh, planned at this time. Many that refer to themselves as Lord. You shall regret these actions. Maybe, but not today. Did Vice know the enemy was inside 90s kid? He did not. Bye bye. It's actually really good ADR. Hmm. Yeah. Ahead. Wasn't this a track uh, over? I thought that was the point of the ending. Uh, uh no, that was the, uh... For sure, Linkara. Angry Joe out. This is a reference Joe. to, uh, Angry Joe, Joe having a rivalry in his show at the time Admiral. with Admiral Akbar. Akbar? Tanny Finland. There's only Akbar. harpies nearby. <laughs> Wouldn't that still count as civilization? <laughs> and again, it's blurry shots, because I had forgotten to turn the autofocus, uh, back on, so... Yeah, and we had already filmed it. It was already miserable. Like, really screw nice it. We that. have it. Let's just do it. Do you really think we should keep this ship? I mean, it's pretty damn powerful. You know, maybe. Sure, what happens later? Can someone theoretically find his armor on the planet? No, because he, his entire body, including the armor, got converted into data. The capabilities of this thing. Liz's thing hair did not really go well with the green screen. Just like, just like the thin waviness of it. Really be it probably would be better with, 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 with you know, maybe, people who actually knew what the hell they were doing with green screens. By this point, I had actual green screens and not maybe just the uh, the light green, green the lime hell green stuff. no, it's mine now. I gotta figure out what I'm gonna name the thing. Ooh, I'm gonna go see if there's a mini bar. Reference to the fact that like like so often in fiction. Especially science fiction, characters get a really useful item or tool or weapon, and they always, and they always like, no, this is too powerful, I gotta get rid of it. Yo, we should just like put it in a closet, forget we ever have it. Hell no! I have a spaceship! I'm keeping this! <laughs> yeah! Why would I do that? That's dumb! Uh, Wasn't there a mini bar though? Yes. I think I actually put it on the official plans. Now, this should probably have Captain gone Vaughan, into the next video. Eight. It's uh, true, but I it just my own feels spaceship. like the conclusion Once you have a spaceship, to this. Dakota. Really, any other argument yep. comes to a close. It, it feels because, like a good coda. Hey, spaceship. Still have no uh, idea I am, what I'm going to call The, the, the audio sounds weird taken. here because I was I was, I decided for this episode to test the lavalier we'll mic. I didn't even have a shotgun mic at this point. Green and gray base. How long are we going for? Anyway, We're going to end in a couple minutes here. Dr. Link I'm actually Sano, not going to lie. I mean, I remember everyone to to commenting the world, that they to being pacified did not like the audio uh, here, but I'm one of the That'll few who actually busy for a few months. Audio. The problem well, was that uh, that I hadn't turned the, uh, the, 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 the automatic command, thing down moment, so that it was not, it was peaking all the time. But this is a big ship, uh, and we still have it explored So in this case, don't you know red shirts don't survive in Trek? Not in this case. This is the Wrath of Khan era uniforms where everyone wears red. So yeah, if I if I did the lavalier nowadays, don't it you? would sound better because I knew because I would know what I was doing with the audio. Oh, crap! Yeah, you're right. And that is it for the Lord Vice Saga for all that he sees, he conquers. 
And I think something got screwed up with the, with the end credits. No worry, Doug Waker! <laughs> that, that happened too. <laughs> Did we include the previously on segment for Ash Comic Number 593? I don't it remember was originally that. Originally in there. It was originally Okay, it was originally in there and then I cut it out more. because it wasn't actually relevant. Yes. Either you made me remove it or or you removed it, yeah. Um Tell you what, next time I do a compilation, I'll make sure that the, 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 the credits are actually correct. Doug Waker, who never did anything sketchy. <laughs> much like much like our 45th president, Anton York. All hail Anton. Oh, and? Which means next time we do this, we're going to be doing, we're going to be on my favorite. And my, and my favorite too. So yeah, that was Link Sano and Lord Vice. Uh, and that, and that ending shot with the, with the, with the final reveal of, uh, cause people, you have been wondering what the hell is that voice thing that keeps showing up? And then with this, after the, uh, the explanation for the entity human, and then the laugh to indicate the entity is our next villain. Uh, uh, and, and, and now Vice isn't around to stop him. So, yeah, here we go. <laughs> here we go. Now we're in for, uh, yeah, next up is my favorite storyline. Uh, final thoughts, the, the, the Linksano and Lord Vice, great stuff. Uh, you know, we, we, we started playing around with, uh, with, with more serious storytelling. We started having more, uh, more emotional stuff. And we raised the stakes, and we would raise the stakes again for the next one, and we'd start having an emphasis on horror, which would be a recurring thing with several storylines down the road. Just uh, like, just like I overall, a good time. It was, it was a rough storyline to do the the Lord Vice stuff, but it all came together in the end. And yeah, how is how is it going with the editing with the next episode? Uh, well. Not at all, considering I need to now write the scripts for the next four, four or five episodes. Unfortunately, I only wrote See. the scripts for all the stuff that was due in April. Now I have to do all the stuff that was due in May. The, uh, the question came up uh, earlier asking me how I was doing editing and all the stuff. And I'm like, ah, I'm not editing. Yep, you, that ain't you, me. You, you just put together the compilation. Because you were oh, not you were not part of the crew at the time. You didn't join up until 2015 uh, during the editing of the movie. Yeah, that's correct. Uh, but as for I think the 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 question was about the uh, the conclusion to the contest. Was oh it? yes, how's yes. Uh, how's contest editing going? I'm not doing the editing. I'm not doing a damn bit of editing. You're doing green screen shots. I'm doing visual effects. Yes. <laughs> How are those visual effects part? coming? Yes, and I'm also uh, editing the finale. I've still got bits to do. It's uh, it's it's gonna pick up here a bit because uh, this past week we uh, you know, we had some stuff going on. Um, I'll tell you more uh, off stream, but uh, yeah, it's gonna pick up again. It's all good. What I also what also is going on is I finally recorded the audio for the Ninja Storm uh, History of Power Rangers redo. Uh, I've started editing that. It probably won't come out for a while. I'm making no promises on that because History of Power Rangers takes longer to edit. Wait, who's editing Contest of Champions? I'm editing it, but but GSR is doing all the visual effects for it, and this is a very visual effects heavy finale. Very. I mean, we not only have to. We not. Uh, can I say where it takes place? Uh, it, I'll, I'll tell. Yeah, it takes place in Temlin Stadium. So we yes, we have seen Temlin Stadium before, uh, and yes, the set does still exist. So it was easier to pull some material from that. Um, unfortunately, we also have several things going on at once, and we got some new shots inside the stadium. We even got a shot outside the stadium this time. Yep. Um, so yeah, we got to, we got a whole bunch of stuff in store. It's gonna look fantastic. It's gonna look amazing. It's gonna be worthy of the wait that you very saintly, patient people have had to mm. endure. Hopefully it's finished by the time oh. we get to the Sleepwalker storyline. <laughs> yeah, because we're already longer than Sleepwalker. Ah! 
I would love it if if the storyline is completed by the time we get to the Sleepwalker stream. But what I'd also love is if not only we've premiered the finale, but we also have the race done too. That would be nice too. Any chance because you visit we're... Argentina in the future? I really wish to see you in a con there. I would love to, but the problem is I need to be invited. And I need you got, and I need the con to pay for a trip because that's international travel. But otherwise, I'd be more than happy to go to Argentina for a con. The longest short arc ever. Yep. yep. Last question. This is one I like to ask. Do you enjoy your job? I love this job. I love a job where I get to set my own hours, where I get to work from home, where I get to be creative with stuff like the storylines. I've already written a few scripts of the next storyline. It's going to be a lot easier than contest. That sh I do not see. Uh, uh, the next storyline taking more than a year. Like, it would be insane if somehow it still t it lasted more than a year. Tim Johnson, will GSR's interviewer character come back? If you're referring to Furious Fred Tolman, uh, that's a good question. That is a good question. I don't think we have him in the finale, though. I don't think so, either. Anyway, well. thank you all for joining us. Thank you, GSR. Uh, thank you for having me on, as always. And thank Hopefully you, Eliza. Hopefully we'll be back for the next one. It is always great being here. We'll be back this weekend with uh, with more Red Dead Redemption Two. Otherwise, thank you all for joining us for the contest of champion. Uh, not for the for the for the Lord Vice and Doctor Linksano arcs. And yeah, we'll be back. With, we'll also be back with commentary for the Entity arc. Uh, a piece of the world is missing. My favorite storyline. <laughs> thank you all. Have a great rest of the night. <laughs>